It's time! Oh my god. I can't believe it. We're here. Oh my god. I... I've like been looking forward to this so much and it's kind of funny like literally today I was just like on by the way sorry I'm kind of late today I slept in a lot <laughs> and oh, I want the other one Okay, no, it, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I, I can wait a little while. Um, but yeah, today, <laughs> I was literally just on YouTube, like, doing my thing, you know, and I get a lot of Ace Attorney in my recommended now for, I want to say, for some reason, as if I don't fucking know. <laughs> but, anyways, um, I get this, like, new ship and I'm like well I mean fuck me but also like well uh, perfect timing like it couldn't have been at a more perfect time <laughs> since there is no phoenix in the investigations game like any of them I mean um he is there like once in each game like in the background like you have to look for him and uh, as far as I know, I don't think Edgeworth ever acknowledges that he's there. But yeah, so here we are with the PS3 controller on my non-emulator. <laughs> oh my god. I even have the cheat sheet up. <laughs> Where is Fleur? I don't want them to miss this. No, Fleur is not on. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, it's it's not really like um, a secret that I've been like really depressed lately and that's fucked up my sleep schedule a lot because I just sat up until like 6 a.m. just watching YouTube for whatever reason. I just didn't want to go to sleep. And now my sleep schedule is kind of fucked so I can't fucking sleep at night. <laughs> and so I sleep uh, like half a day. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh my god. I uh, tried doing some minor things, I, I think. I didn't really do like a lot, but I did a few things. Just here and there, you know? The chat box is bigger now, you can actually see what's going on. Not like in the trilogy where it was just kind of like really small on the side. Which I wasn't really a big fan of, but I really liked have, being able to like see the chat on the video because I upload these to YouTube. is like typing to me and <laughs> just go home from work perfect typing then my god 
I don't know, like, I'm excited to, like, find out how long each episode takes because I'm not sure about that. And, uh, yeah. So, who knows how long the stream will be. I don't know if I'm just gonna do, like, the first case because it's only two, two episodes. No, it's two e the first episode because it's only two, two chapters. That's what I meant to say. And, uh, I don't know. Depending on the time, I might start the second episode, but I don't know. Do, 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 do. I don't really like splitting episodes into, like, two parts unless I really have to. And, uh, it's only f four parts, so should be fine maybe perhaps i don't know God. I don't want to start yet. I want to wait for Fleur. All right, they're they're part of like a uh, Edgeworth gang, so I gotta give them ample time to show up. <laughs> don't even know like if the audio will be fine I mean it's the same as I use for uh, Okami then but I don't know yes you're here hell yeah let's fucking go oh about visitor let's go i like that it, that the image looks better on the screen the 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 the, 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 the stream than it does on my screen <laughs> i wish i could show you this because it's really funny anyways turn about visitor let's fucking go and let's turn off that music To make sure the defendant is found guilty. What other choice do I have? That's the job of a prosecutor after all. That may be true, but why? Why go this far? Sorry, maybe I wasn't clear enough. But a guilty verdict is all that matters to me. No matter what the cost. I'm a prodigy among prosecutors. Always have been, always will be. Is the audio a bit loud? I feel like it's kind of loud. There he is! No. It's hard to believe that I've been away from my from my office for a whole month. I hope Detective Gumshoe has been keeping an eye on my office and keeping it clean. 
Hmm? The door is unlocked. Detective Gumshoe? Hmm, what's this smell? It's very familiar. Blood? What the? What's the meaning of this? Freeze! Identify yourself. Shut up. Hmm. You've got some nerve committing murder in the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Is that a threat? Let me make one thing very clear. What? No one gets away with committing murder in my office. No one. Yeah, fucking walk up, bitch! Fucking walk away! My name is Miles Edgeworth, and I work as a prosecutor in my local district. Little did I know that upon my return home after a month abroad, I would be thrust into a multitude of cases in some very frantic and busy days. I finished photographing the victim's body, sir. Very well. Please continue your investigation. Yes, sir! Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Are you okay, sir? Keep it down, detective. This is a crime scene. When I heard that a murder had taken place in your office, I ran up here straight away. This is Dick Gumshoe. He is a detective with the local precinct. And the one they assigned to handle this murder case for the time being. <laughs> You're looking a little pale, sir. Are you hurt? No, I'm perfectly fine. However... Look what they did to your office! It's totally thra trashed! I'll, I'll say, the culprit sullied my floor with dirt rather well. No one gets away with tracking mud into my office. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, Edgeworth, sure. <laughs> Whoa, sounds like you're getting really burned up over this whole thing. This crime was committed in my office, so it is my responsibility to solve it. Ho oh, ho, that's just like you, Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, time to do some investigating. Agreed, our first course of action is to gather relevant facts and leads. We must not overlook anything, no matter how small we, if we are to find the truth. So I'll keep any leads or information we find etched in the forefront of my mind. Speaking of things that pique my curiosity, why of all places did the murder occur in my office? Is it really coincidence that the murder took place in my office? <laughs> I have to sneeze. <laughs> hmm. I get the nagging feeling that this is something important to keep in mind. Yeah, I was wondering that myself, sir. Thank you. I mean, you can't really say it's just a coincidence, can you? No, not really, especially because of this. The key to your office? For security reasons, his, this office, this door, has a lock built into it. Okay, fair. What do you mean, sir? If you think about it carefully and use logic, it should become clear to you. Logic? By finding the connection between two pieces of information and connecting them, new information is born. That is the end result of using logic. So, how do you use it? First to recall information through the logic button, and then connect them together. Now to touch the logic, logic button and recall the facts. So what we do, we just connect the thoughts. For security reasons, all prosecutor stores are outfitted with locks. Which means it would have been hard for the murderer and the victim to get in here. Ergo, it's impossible to dismiss the location of this crime as mere coincidence. It's the logic button on his head! <laughs> it's, that's exactly what I was thinking, sir. 
There must be a reason why someone infiltrated in my room. What was the killer after? Why did this happen in my office? What was the killer after? You're really on the ball today, Mr. Edgeworth. That's some beautiful logic, sir. Yes, well, when you follow leads to their, conclu their conclusion, only the truth remains. However, if the information doesn't line up properly, I may stray far from the truth as well. But if I think carefully before piecing leads together, the logic should flow. Well, let's get started with our investigation, shall we? Yes, sir. The basis of any good in investigation is to examine everything, sir. I know that. And when I want to examine something, I simply touch the examine button. Yes, 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 I know. Oh, if you ever feel lost and want to talk, just press the partner button, okay? I'll give you great precise advice as an ace investigator, sir. <sighs> something to try later, if I have free time, I suppose. Yay! We can run around! <laughs> Hold on, wait. Chess, chess board. Oh, she even knocked over your chess set. I had I had it all set up ready for you for when you got back. I figured we could play a few games. I had no idea you were interesting in, interested in chess. I'm actually pretty good at checkers, so I thought I'd give chess a try. Hmm, in that case, I suppose I can set some aside after we solve the case. Some time aside after we solve this case. Though I don't expect the games to tax my mental acuity much. Sir, why do you why do you speak so so strange? <laughs> Anyways, here is a prosecutor's badge, proof of my profession. However, I prefer to keep it in my pocket. I'm just putting that out there. Profiles, who the hell is this? The victim in this case, why was he killed in my office? Good question. Oh yeah, it's really, it's, it's really, it's really fancy. It's really cool. All right. Let's examine the body. They finished photographing the body, so it should be alright to examine this area. <laughs> Let's see here. There's a wallet. What do we have here? Do you think I've seen one of those before? It's a police badge, de detective. Oh, it's a police badge. Oh, hey, I have the exact same thing, actually. What a quinky dink. Let's take a look inside. Mr. Body Faith? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it would appear that our victim was a detective, just like you. According to his badge and ID, Buddy Faith was a precinct detective. Faith, Buddy Faith. Let's see here. Hmm. There's blood all over his lower abdo abdominal area. It looks like the bullet passed clean through his stomach area, sir. In other words, he was shot. Yup, and until the autopsy is done, I don't think we'll know much more than that. Please have the body sent to the morgue once they're done process processing the crime scene. Ooh. Are you going to be okay with keeping track of the evidence we find, sir? Of course. This is the safest way I know to keep track of it all. all right, if you say so. Keep all the evidence I find either in or with my organizer. When I want to re-examine a piece, I have to... I have, but to, I have but to touch the organizer button. Okay, but the organizer isn't only for evidence. I keep people's pro profiles on hand in it too. It's probably a good idea to make a habit of checking the, the facts often. Okay, got you. Let's see here, there's blood all over. Okay, it's just the same. Files are all over the floor, sir. They probably fell during the struggle between the vic victim and his killer. My files are a mess, pointing to a struggle between the victim and the killer. Oh, and I tried so hard to keep this place spotless while you were away. I mean, this just rendered all the time and effort I put in pointless. I don't recall ever asking you to clean my room. Well, I watered the flowers every day just like you requested, sir. Didn't he say at the beginning that he hoped that uh, Gumshoe had cleaned... I had kept his office clean. What? Hold on, wait. I'm gonna tilt this down just a tiny bit. That's a bit too much. Yeah, he did! <laughs> okay, so it wasn't just me. 
Is the audio okay? By the way, I feel like it's a bit loud. I can turn it down easily though. I feel like that's bit that's a bit better. It's good. Okay, cool. I just added cleaning to the list as a weekend special. For about half a day every Saturday, I come in and clean this place until it sparkles. Does he have a life? Sir? I don't believe it! I packed those files on these shelves so tight that not even an earthquake could make them fall off, but just look at them. By this rate, the rest of the files won't be able to withstand an earthquake at all. A, a problem, to be sure. Poor baby. Well, once the investigation is over, we'll put them back up on the shelf. Okay, let me just check that. That's what, that was all. I already checked. Okay, cool. That just means I, I finished here. <laughs> hmm, a gun. What have we here? Could this perhaps be the murder weapon? Yeah, if there's an earthquake, she has, has bigger problems than some files. Mm, yeah, pretty much. He's like, mm, yeah, those files, those are very important. <laughs> also, look, I'm matching. <laughs> I also have frills. <laughs> It's almost as if I wore this on purpose. Hmm, strange. <laughs> hey. If so, it would mean that the killer made their escape after disposing of their gun here. Real bros. Think I've seen one of these before. Hmm. Care to enlighten me as to where? Oh, I know. It was issued the exact same model. I think. Ah, <sighs> detective. I don't really like guns all that much. I mean, they're really dangerous. But now that I think about it, you do, so do you do see this model around the precinct a lot, sir. I don't use mine much, except in emergencies, so that's why I don't recognize it. Gumshoe has a gun? <laughs> so it's the same type of revolver as the ones used by the this precinct's detectives. Nice. Hmm, I seem to have gathered a few pieces of pertinent information. You know, to calmly use some logic and figure it out figure out if any of them are connected to each other. Wait, no, actually, yeah, that makes sense. He has it in the anime too. Remember how he wants to just like give it to pearls all the time? No, it's not in the anime. It's literally in the game. Hey, are you wanna hold a gun? <laughs> I mean, the revolver and the detective, right? Yes! The revolver, the standard model used by, de by detectives. Could it have belonged to our recently departed? Gunshu. <laughs> Detective Gunshu, please, could you please thoroughly check the victim's body one more time. Yes, sir. On it now, sir. Excuse me, pal. Let's see. What have we got here? It's Redworth, sir. This guy's wearing a gun holster. Hmm, so it appears that our killer somehow managed to take the victim's gun from him. Let's see what else we can find out about this revolver. I always say, you got to look really carefully at each piece of evidence. You can use the scroll wheels to rotate an object. There's no such thing as a bad angle. Well, wait, I'm gonna yeah, move a bit over here, maybe because of... Okay, yeah, 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 I know how to, I know how to do this. Oh, there it is. Whee! And there we go. It looks like only one round was fired from this. 
Wow, so the killer killed the Vic with just one shot after res wrestling the gun from him. Sounds like the guy knew how to handle a gun, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? We have no proof for now, but that is a distinct possibility. I guess this is, a, this is about all we're going to find out. We should send the body to our... Jim? Why, oh why? How could this have happened to a guy like you? Are you alright? Don't touch me! Leave me alone! Just let me be! Sorry, but I can't do that. The investigation is still ongoing, so please refrain from touching the body. The body? The body? Don't talk about him like he's just some lump of flesh! Look at him! Jim looks like he's just turned in for the night. Um, sure. Just in a bloodstained suit, pal. Where are my matters? Aren't you that prosecutor? Well, yes, I am. I'm Jack Sportsman. <laughs> Jacques... No, Jacques Sportsman. Actually, that's it. Jacques... Jacques Sportsman. Jim here was my partner in crime, busting. Miles Edgeworth, and like you, I am also a prosecu prosecutor. With a detective Dick Gumshoe, sir. So you're Miles Edgeworth. I guess this is your office. Yes, that is correct. Then it was you! You were the one who killed Jim! Hey, don't go around jumping to conclusions, pal. Let's just calm down, okay? I will not. I know how things work around here. High prosecutor's office door has... All have locks built into them. God, I can't fucking read. Also, my <laughs> my nose is clogged for an unknown reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I haven't done anything. And only the owner of the office has the key to his or her own office door. That is correct. However, I was not the one who killed your partner. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth has been overseas in the business on a business trip for this whole time, pal. I read his name as Jacques. <laughs> it's Jacques. And the key to the door was with me the entire time, okay? So the only one who could get in here was me. Wow. Good job, Gumshoe. Wait. That means... <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. So it was you then. You're Jim's killer. No way, pal. You got it all wrong. Everyone, calm down. A sportsman, correct? If you are a real prosecutor, you should know to stay collected. The investigation has only just begun. Isn't it too early to be drawing conclusions? Alright, I get the point. You're right, my mistake. I tend to get a little too hot-headed sometimes. You sure are one cool customer though, Miss Redgeworth. I've heard all the rumors about you. You're the great genius prosecutor. You're something of a legend, you know. Anyway, let's call it truce and work together, okay? Now how about a handshake to seal the deal? <laughs> a pleasure to work with you. You guys were conducting your investigation, right? Sorry for barging in like that. Carry on then, it's your room after all. Thank you, I intend to. I just want a little more time to say goodbye to Jim. You there? You there! Oh, sorry, that's it. Sir! <laughs> I want you to capture this scene on film for me. My final farewell to my partner, Jim. I should probably give them some space. <laughs> Alright, let's go take a look at this. Your jacket, sir! What's it doing on the floor? It must have fallen off the wall when the killer tried to threaten me by firing around. So the killer not only shot the victim, but they shot your jacket as well. You dare to shoot the ultra-special jacket that, m that you made your prosec prosecutorial debut in. <laughs> Edgeworth is just as awkward as ever. <laughs> What if they had shot through it? It would have been a disaster. It's not worth getting worked up over, Detective. Not when there's something more here. Huh? Like what? 
I take it you haven't noticed yet, detective. There is a giant contradiction right here in front of us. Really? already wow <laughs> did I say contradiction he must be rubbing off on me I'm starting to sound like him sound like whom's whom's <laughs> but I have my own methods and I will conduct this investigation my way when the scene before me contradicts a piece of evidence or seems off that's when my deductive skills come into play first I have to find the spot that holds the contradiction um, that's easy. This is it. This bullet hole is where the contradiction lies. When I spot something that's off, I should touch the deduce button with conviction. And then I have found the sufficient proof to prove the contradiction I presented. This is how I do things. Eureka! Eureka! Yes! Let's fucking go! This bullet hole is the contradiction. I remember to press the button with conviction. <laughs> Looking yes. <laughs> what do you mean, sir? It's elementary. Two shots were fired in this room. The first fell the victim. And the second fell this frame. Hey, that's right. However, this gun was only fired once. Hey, that's true too. Which means that one of these two bullets was fired from a different gun. Does the killer have another gun prepared for tonight? By the way, I noticed something, sir. Yes? What's that thing sticking out from behind the frame? Ah, that. It's a secret safe. A, a secret safe? Well, I smell money. I'll spare us the trouble and just say it. Nothing like what you're imagining is inside. Now if you could kindly move this frame out of the way. Roger that. Talk about dusty. I suppose that's what happens when I'm not here to dust it once in a while. I had no idea there was a safe here, or I'd have kept it clean for you, sir. So when did you put this thing in? It wasn't something I had installed personally. Every prosecutor's office has one. Really? I had no idea. Well, only prosecutors are supposed to have knowledge of their existence. So what's inside, Mr. Edgeworth? Right now? Nothing. We only use them to store especially important evidence when the trial is in session. That's it? Talk about squashing my hopes and dreams. I want rest instead of inspected. Okay, cool. Hmm. Now this is odd. You found something, sir? This keypad. Don't you find it to be a bit too clean? Yeah, there's a thick layer of dust all around it, but not on the keypad itself. <laughs> you there, the forensic scientist. Yes, sir. Could you please dust this area for fingerprints? You got it, sir. I couldn't find, find, let alone lift a single print. No, I couldn't find, let, get, uh, I couldn't find, let, let alone lift a single print. Looks like it was wiped down well. Interesting. As I thought, it appears that logic is the only way around this setback. Time to rationally and calmly play connect the dots with the information we have. Oh yeah, let's fucking go. Yes. I believe I have figured out what the murderer was after. Well, what is it, sir? The fact that the safe was wiped clean of fingerprints suggests that the criminal had at least attempted to open my safe, making the culprit's motive for breaking and entering theft, I believe. I wonder if knowing that the motive behind this break-in was theft changes what the other pieces of information can tell me about this crime. Oh my 
my god. Why do I just... I hold my breath the entire time. There is a possibility that the files played on the floor are not the result of a struggle between the victim and his killer. Oh, you mean like it could be from when the killer tried to find something, sir? Precisely. We need to figure out if any of the files have been stolen. Yes, sir. I'm gonna shell files like you've never seen before, even at the library. Um, sure. Let's give that a try. Why do all the good ones always die young? Surely you must ponder that every once in a while, Mr. Edgeworth. No matter how much we may lament, the dead will not come back to life. All we can do is search for the truth. And so what are we supposed to do? How do we go about finding the truth? First we calmly restore the files to their rightful place. You got it. Here, let me help. Um, so this file goes here, and that book goes there. You sure know a lot about where things go, despite it being Mr. Edgeworth's office. Because I'm the one who keeps it tidy, pal. Okay, done. It would appear that the murder was definitely committed here. Uh -huh. The bloodstains on the book sh bookshelf are still fresh. I said... I suspect that the victim was killed in the standing position, hence the prints on the shelf. And then the guy fell onto the floor, right? The blood on the floor is kind of grossing me out. Detective, I don't have the time to deal with your weak stomach right now. Mm, but you know I'm no good with blood, sir. I'm certain there's something wrong with this picture. So this is where the bullet lodged itself after it went through the victim, huh? For the bullet to be lodged so squarely in a file spine indicates that the files were ransacked after the shooting had occurred. And I guess the victim was moved because he was in the killer's way. Victim's handprints. He must have tried to support himself with his hands here after being shot. There are prints on the floor too. Those must have been made when unable to, to stay standing he dropped to the floor. I'm sure you're a detective. He's doing his best, okay. It appears that the victim was in a sitting position here after being shot. So that's why the seat of the victim's pants has blood on it. That would be the logical conclusion. Oh wait, let me let me deduce this. Is this spot somewhat connected with any of the evidence I hold? There is clearly a contradiction here with this bullet hold. What do you mean, sir? You don't see? Quite simply, the bullet hole itself is too low. If the victim was shot in the stomach, the hole should be much higher up. But what if the guy was shot while he was sitting or lying down, sir? That would be illogical. The victim leaned against his shelf, this shelf here, after being shot. Which suggests that he was standing when he was shot. And that means... Wait, what does that mean, sir? It means you need to use your brain every once in a while instead of mine. <laughs> ah, wonderful. In any case, it means someone made a faulty assumption. And it was from this mistake that our current contradiction was born. What is the faulty assumption that caused this problem with the bullet hole's position? I mean, the order of the files. I believe the order of the files is a bit off. You mean I put them back in the wrong order just now? Hey, actually, I think the labels on the files are wrong, sir. Oh? Yeah, you see here how the files that were shot begin with the number zero? What are those doing all the way down here after 1, 2, and 3? It's really weird. Actually, the way they are organized now is the correct order. They are exactly as I see them in my, in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all out of order. Those white binders are special, so they are arranged a little differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the crime occurred. Aha, so that's it. I believe the killer made the same incorrect assumption as you just did, detective. Let's rearrange the files in numerical order and see what we find out. 
You think it'd be okay to prop the body back up to, s to how it was before it was moved? They finished pros processing the crime scene, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. If you please, if you please, Detective Kamshu. As I suspected, the bullet hole is now where it should logically be. The killer went through my files first before shooting Mr. Faith. And then put the files back in numerical order, I guess. Exactly. And then proceeded to shoot the victim. But why would someone kill a man and then look through your files one more time? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown out to, into disarray twice, once before and once after the crime. But why? Now the crime scene is, that it is as it was at the, mur at the time of the murder. Time to give it another look. What's this? This. What is that? Why does it say gumshoe on there with in blood? I'd say it's some incredibly incriminating evidence. Yes, indicative of criminal activity indeed. No, wait, there's gotta be some mistake. Mr. Edward, sir, help me. Say something, sir. It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is it all, sir? What about me and my situation? Is this what the killer was really after? Sweet! Looks like Jim was able to leave us in the name of his, uh, leave us the name of his killer in the end. And this most important message managed to reach us. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! You, you can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. If you're going to accuse the detective Gumshoe of being the culprit. I sincerely hope you have some proof to back it up. Jim's words, they're more than enough, wouldn't you say? If that's how you want to play it, and it, at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it. I don't like this one bit. There's something strange about this man's attitude. And there must be some sort of flaw to his logi logic waiting for me to dig out. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you going to do? What I always do in court, I'm going to cross-examine him. One way or another, I'll expose the flaw in his logic with this technique. Ooh, how do you do that? Can you explain it to me, sir? Maybe some other time I know how to do this. Mr. Portsman, if you are ready. Aw, if you don't have time, you could just say so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gumshoe, but I don't mean to sit through this, okay? Take the Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed theft instead. That's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. Thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters that his body was hiding. And it will be by his final words that you will be brought to justice. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message point to his killer. I can hear Jim's voice and he's calling for his killer's arrest. Hmm. Are you sure you're not mishearing his words, Mr. Portsman? There's no way Detective Gumshoe is the culprit here. I will find the flaw in this man's logic and expose it with credible evidence. Wait, why would he shoot him? Why would he like steal? Oh, no, wait, there we go. Let me press. You know, there's something I've been meaning to ask. Hmm? What is it? What do you call the victim, Jim? When clearly his name is Buddy Faith. Isn't it obvious? Jim is the perfect name for my companion. Jacques and Jim. Don't those two names go together like peanut butter and jam? But Jim isn't even close to the guy's real name. Well, Jacques and Buddy just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was a third of a bunch of guys I decided to nickname Jim. Hmm, he talks about the victim like he was his pet. That's strange. <laughs> do you really think it was necessary to dishevel my shells twice to do that? That's true. Okay, then maybe his real intent was theft. Hey, are you accusing me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth? 
It's a possibility. Maybe your salary's been cut so much that life is getting a little too rough to handle. I'll have you know that I eat three square meals every day, pal. Okay, so all three of them happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor thing. What an evil prosecutor you were paired up with. And what a motive, no? And why would Detective Gumshoe do such a thing? Because the body was getting in his way. He had to mess up your bookshelf somehow, right? Anyway. Hmm. Why do you think that the killer didn't notice the bloody letters? The body was covering it quite well, wouldn't you say? That's how he missed it. But judging by what I've seen, it doesn't take much for your detective to miss something. Who do you think you are? You know nothing about me, pal. There's a lot a person can understand about another from first impressions alone. Can't say I disagree with him on that point. Why don't you say something, sir? N not, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth. Despite his lack of attention to detail, I don't believe the detective to be the culprit. Nobody could have overlooked the bloody letters, and I can prove it. With evidence, of course. I couldn't ask for a better setup. For the game finishing spike. I mean, this is the final, isn't it? It would behoove you to take a good look at this. Is it not that? Fuck. Ah! You're saying that those letters were intended for you. Yep. Jim was an outstanding detective. I would expect no less from my former partner. It looks like Mr. Portsman still doesn't understand. He has yet to figure out the true meaning behind the bloody letters. What are you sputtering, o sputtering over there? Can't you just admit my logic is perfectly sound? Actually, there's a gigantic flaw in his logic. A gap so wide that even the good detective can spot it. Not to clue Mr. Portsman in by presenting him with some evidence. Did I present it on the right one? I don't fucking know. Objection. It was that. I pressed the wrong one. Okay. Perhaps you're not aware, Mr. Portsman, but there is a serious flaw in your logic. Heh. <laughs> Bringing a bit of the courtroom into this, I see. No problem. I'm game. I can't help but find it odd. Excuse me? Odd that a fellow prosecutor would be brought down by the power of his own office. Wh what are you talking about? Oh, you're joking. I get it. <laughs> if you have time to laugh, then you have the time to take another closer look at this. Do you still not see? If not, may I direct your attention to the missing file? Wh what? Th that's impossible. What's impossible, Mr. Portsman? Um, uh, nothing. The files in that shelf are all about a certain case. When the killer went to take the file after murdering your partner, I highly doubt they would have missed, they could have missed the blood letters written on the spines. It's possible that they could have taken the file before committing the murder. I think it's pretty obvious that the file was stolen after it was written on. The missing letters in the detective's name where the file should be is proof. Yeah, I mean, the S is gone and there is only half an H. If Detective Gumshoe really was a culprit of this case, I highly doubt that even he would overlook his own name written in blood on the files. Especially as a detective who can't stand the sight of blood. <laughs> I get fucking wrecked, Portsman. Which means, what exactly does that make this dying message? It makes it the work of a criminal criminal intent on tampering with the crime scene. The back lean though. <laughs> so low, I can't believe the criminal tried to pin this whole thing on me, sir. I'm gonna get him, sir. You'll see. I'm gonna have them under arrest in no time. Well, Mr. Portsman. 
Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, absolutely splendid. Logic deserving of Olympic gold. I appreciate the praise, but it doesn't change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Meh. You win some and lose some. That's how life goes. Glad everyone's so cheery, even though I feel more dead than alive. Oh, but you know, it really is a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however. What is it this time? Are you still after me, pal? Humor me for a second. Who has the key to this office? That will be me. But Mr. Edgeworth just proved that I'm innocent, pal. That's absolutely right. And I acknowledge your in innocence. Why do I sense that you still have something to say? Well, I was thinking. Did you know there is one other person with a key to this office? One other person? Hey, you there! Yes, sir. What is it, sir? Would you kindly fetch and escort that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? The girl is the member of this building's security. Think of her as a material witness. Security? Did you say security? No, stop it, pal. Don't. What's wrong with him all of a sudden? I believe she needs no introduction. I have called upon Miss Maggie Bird, a member of security. It's detective Gumshoes, sir. Maggie! Miss Bird is a security guard on watch tonight. I see, and your point is... My point is that she could very well have used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the office doors in this in this building. W what? If you are not the guilty party, Detective Gumshoe, then the only other person with access to this room is Miss Bird. How dare you? I would never sneak into someone's room. That's right, I refuse to believe that Maggie is the culprit, pal. Um, it was me. That's right, I did it. Can we take that as a confession, detective? Um, well, it wasn't really me, but it definitely wasn't Maggie, pal. So yeah, it was me. If it was, you'd have no problem with that, right? Please refrain from flying off the handle, detective. There is no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, detective. He understands what I'm saying here. I'm pretty sure Bird is now even with Maya's murder suspects. That girl is the only one who could have committed the crime, and for one simple reason. Sir, can you just keep your jacket on or off? <laughs> that really should not be as funny as it fucking is, but it is. It's too cold. No, it's too warm. It's too cold. <laughs> it looks like he's doing the chicken dance. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. It's pretty obvious that Miss Bird snuck into your room using the master key. I mean, if Detective Gumshoe isn't the one who opened the door. Then that leaves only Miss Bird as our prime suspect. On top of which, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Making it all the more probable that she was the one who faked the dying message. So you're saying she used the master key? Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then, this is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflexes and reaction time, especially for an athlete like me. I wonder if there was anyone else other than Miss Bird who could have used the master key. It seems that the only way to get Mr. Portsman to give me more details is to press him. I'll press him, alright. Hold it! Hmm. 
Hmm. Don't you think it's a bit early to be jumping to conclusions? Are you saying there's another way to open the door other than the, with the master key? Oh, I get it. Perhaps you had a spare made for someone else. I'll have you know, I have never made a spare, so what are you insinuating? Nothing. I guess I should have known better than to suggest that someone like you would. By dying message, you mean the bloody letters that spell out gumshoe. I figured that whoever wrote his name must have wanted to frame him. And just the act of choosing his name is proof enough that the two knew each other well. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and present some evidence. I would love to. But first, we should listen a bit more and digest what he is saying. And press him for more information. Okay, cool. Guess I just have to press everything. Are you sure Miss Bird is the only member of security who could have used the master key? There's only one person on staff at this time of night, and tonight she is it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? That's, um, true, but... But I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir. Wasn't able to? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes, moving on. I'd hate to get sidetracked by something unrelated. What do you mean, unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal. But you can't really trust her not to tell lies. Plus, I hate wasting time. Hmm, should I hear Miss Bird out? Yes, ask for more details. So fast. I too am interested in hearing what Miss Bird has to say. Didn't I just say it'd be a waste of time? We don't need to hear her lies. I'll be the judge of that. Miss Bird, if you please. I discovered that the master key was missing at around 1am, sir. What do you mean by missing? As in, it wasn't anywhere in the security booth, sir. The killer must have stolen it. Mr. Portsman, I believe it's to be an important piece of testimony, don't you? I can't believe that someone like you would be taken in by such words. I'm not lying, sir. If that's the case, then I'd like to know why you have the master key now. I I don't quite know. It just appeared all of a sudden, sir. Maggie looks really cute in this, by the way. Huh, a likely story. And where is your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? I bet you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I never lose things. I can practically guarantee that. With with me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone stole it. Yeah, pal. Trust me. You don't want to test just how bad her luck is. Unfortunately, I can't deem this piece of testimony as conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. But... But... You still haven't established Maggie's motive for breaking into Mr. Edgeworth's office. Her motive? Didn't we already establish that, that it was theft? Theft? I mean, the culprit clearly went through the bookshelves and at least tried the safe. It is as Mr. Portsman says, Detective. I can't ignore the fact that all the evidence points towards a motive of theft. But I'm done taking blows. It's time to counterattack with a few facts of my own. Is it now? Her intent from the messed up shelves on the right desk. To the wipe down safe at safe thievery. I mean, it's detective. Yep, there it is. Ah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Objection. Stop flapping your jacket. <laughs> Do you wish to continue insisting that Miss Bird was set on stealing something? Well, why not? It's the truth, after all. It was also by your logic that we came to the whole theory conclusion anyway. That may be, but you must also be aware of the fact that the safe is a secret safe. The existence of which is only private to prosecutors. I find it a little hard to believe that the hidden safe was a part of her cunning plan. But... but she could have found it by accident while she was turning everything else upside down. I highly doubt that. I'd say the culprit knew exactly what they were looking for. After all, only the bookshelf and the safe were targeted. 
Yeah, even I didn't know about the safe, pal. And that means there's no way Maggie could have known about it either. Th then, are you proposing that the killer is a prosecutor? Interesting conclusion. That's definitely looking more and more probable. Mance is so scared. <laughs> It's wrong, Prosecutor. Do you have a different suspect in mind now? I- I- Curses! Why? What made you- What's with the angry face all of a sudden? It's- It's all my fault! What do you mean? It's Jim. He knew about the existence of the secret safes. What did you just say? You were partners, like inseparable conjoined twins. That's why I told him. I filled him in on the secret safes. And that means... Yeah, I know, I had only told him too. Obviously, it was wrong of me to tell him. I still can't quite believe it, but the thief who broke into your room was probably Jim. Now he's claiming that the victim was the thief? And you were simply trying to stop him, weren't you? I don't, I'm not happy with this voice, but I'm fucking... I'm going with it, I guess. Miss Maggie Bird. Excuse me? I mean, you are a security guard, right? That is your job. Killing is going a bit too far, even in your risky profession. What the? You're still accusing Maggie of the murder? Yes and no. I mean, she had stumbled upon Jim, who had probably drawn his gun. I get it. It was self-defense, wasn't it? N no, I, I couldn't. I could never do something like that. Not even as a security guard, sir. Plus, even if he was the thief... He wouldn't have a key to this office. Which is precisely why you had to steal it, wouldn't you say? It was Jim who stole the master key. Huh? Pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with us. Unless... Well, unless you retrieved it from Jim after you killed him. Mr. Portsman, are you honestly accusing your own partner of being a thief? <laughs> I don't want to admit it, but... It's the only way for everything else to make sense. I see no honor. Now then, I think we're done here. The investigation waits for no man. Would you people be so qu kind as to see yourselves out? You can't kick us out. This is Mr. Redworth's office. Oh, but I'm the one who has been assigned to this case. You are all suspects to varying degrees and therefore ineligible to run this show. Listen, pal, how many times do I have to say this? Maggie can't be the culprit. Detective Gumshoe, calm yourself. But, but sir... You have no choice but to accommodate his request for now. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. At least one of you understands. <laughs> <laughs> now then, if you could remove yourselves from my crime scene, I'd be most grateful. Hm. Mark my words, Mr. Portsman. We will meet again. If that's a formal request from the legendary prosecutor himself, then I suppose so. Now don't disappoint me, you hear? That took me like almost an hour. Hell yeah. Damn. Okay. Yes, save. That's a slow save. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so slow. <laughs> what is with that prosecutor? I can't believe how rude he was. It was unbelievable. Please maintain your professionalism, detective. I'm gonna find some real solid evidence proving Maggie's innocence. You'll see, sir. We even kicked out of the crime scene, sir. True. So then what now? Looks like my life's fallen into yet another gigantic ditch. Ditch, yeah. Do not despair, Miss Bird. We can overcome this as well. There are many other places and things we should be looking into anyway. Huh? <laughs> really, sir? For example, this hallway. The linchpin of his argument against Miss Bird is related to the master key. In that case, this hallway is the perfect place to look for more information regarding the mystery surrounding my door. Mm -mm -mm -mm. God, it's so fun. You can just run around. Yeehaw! 
Gee, I wonder if this this is Mr. Sportsman, sorry, Portsman's office. Oh look, we got. Looks like you're in quite the pinch. Oh, it. <clears throat> it looks like you're in quite the pinch, Mr. Edgeworth. To be sure, a murder within the walls of the prosecutor's office is no trifling matter. We must must find, apprehend, and pun punish the killer accordingly, post haste. Sounds like a messy case you've got on your hands. If you ever feel lost or need some advice, my door is always open. How gracious. I will keep your offer in mind. Who is this guy again? <laughs> I won't rest until that. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, <laughs> I forgot we just ran into pain and I was like, who's jumpy hair? Ah, uh, yes, pain, of course, makes sense. It's, isn't that that missing zero series file, sir? <laughs> Is a <it> pain. <laughs> no doubt about it. The bloody letters mark it clear as day. There seems to be a few pages missing. The thief took only what was necessary and left the rest behind. So what are these zero files about, sir? I guess they've got something worth stealing in them, huh? Not particularly. It's just a collection of court case files. files. However, the cases within these files are not mine. Huh? They belong to the high prosecutor that used to occupy my current office. I have my reasons, but let's just say I was charged with keeping them as they were. That means the thief must must have also wanted the file for a specific reason, right? It would seem so. Only the pages related to that case from ten years ago are missing. I wonder why anyone would care about such an old case. I was wondering if I may speak with you for a bit concerning this case. I've always been a, high, a big, big fan of the courtroom, but this... This is like a dream. A dream where I'm being cross-examined by THE Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> I can't let this chance pass me by. I must remember to ask her about the... About the master key. I should jog her memory by showing my notes to her through the present button. Have you ever met the victim before? Well, I've seen him a couple of times before when I had to go to Mr. Portsman's office. Mr. Faith was always playing basketball with Mr. Portsman, sir. Sounds like fun. Just once I'd have loved to play with them. It sounds fun, but the only person ever taking that shot was Mr. Portsman. All Mr. Faith ever did was pass him the ball, sir. On second thought, I don't think I'd have fit in at all. Fit in all that well with them. Poor dude. Miss Maggie Bird, correct? I take it that you are an acquaintance of the detective. She was under my supervision back when she was still in the force, sir. One day she got caught up in a murder and things started going downhill, so she quit. But I owe a lot to Detective Gumshoe for introducing me to my current employer. Or so I thought, until a few hours ago. If someone's named Faith, he's dead. <laughs> Buddy Faith. His name is like Buddy Faith. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Buddy Faith? Really? He's 29, and she is 23. I'm the same age as Maggie Bird? I'm sorry. Wow. Right before I was about to clock out for the night. You got caught up in this whirlwind of a case, correct? Don't worry, my whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. And now I even managed to be named a criminal just when I've become a security guard. That's a lot to go through in one lifetime. I know! 
And just when I thought I'd finally found my happiness, I wind up getting you and Detective Gumshoe involved in my bad luck. You don't need to worry about me, Miss Bird, nor do you need to worry about yourself. I will solve this case and prove your innocence. All I ask in return is for your cooperation. Yes, sir, Mr. Edgeworth. You can count on me. I'll, I'll do all I can to help. Yeah, it is. It is, actually, her third time. Pretty much. Oh, wait. Presents. There we go. And the Master Key. So when did you discover that the Master Key was missing? By the time I realized it, I think it was around 1 a.m., sir. And I noticed it was... Uh, it was back at around 2.30 a.m. It was just sitting there on the ledge where the security room's reception window is. But I'm sure that between those two times, it was not just gone, but stolen, sir. Why is such an important key stored in such an insecure place? It's not like that, sir. We always keep the key further inside the room, away from the window. Always, you say, except for this time, correct? Well, I admit that I was a bit careless, but I have my reasons. I left it out because I was sort of using it at the time. It was after I had used it that I left it sitting out on the ledge. She used the master key. What did you mean by you used the master key? Well, I had to use it to open the door for this prosecutor who had forgotten his key. I mean, it's my job as a security guard, right? Huh? What is it? That's right! I just remembered! The prosecutor who forgot his key! It was Mr. Portsman, sir! What? Please tell me more, Miss Bird. Quickly. Ah, yes, the blue badger. We're only gonna see more of him from now until after Apollo Justice. Because I, I, I don't know if I recall seeing him in the 3DS games. It was around 12 a.m. Mr. Portsman had forgotten his office key, so he came down to security, sir. And that's when you loaned the master key to him. No way! It's against regulation to, to loan the master key out to anyone. I walked with Mr. Portsman to his office and opened the door for him personally, sir. I see. And then, what happened after that? Well, he called for me to come close up his office as he was leaving to go home. That was around 1.30 a.m., I think. So, in summary, for the sake of one forgetful prosecutor, you used the master key twice tonight. Talk about suspicious. I doubt you can say that you've never left your keys at home, detective. I think this calls for a thorough examination of Mr. Portsman's door. Room 1203. I take it that is, the port that is Mr. Portsman's office. Yeah, you can't mistake it because of that basketball hoop, sir. Well, that reminds me, Mr. Portsman had actually wanted, wanted room 1202 really badly. But since you were already occupying it, Mr. Edgeworth, we put him in next him next door, sir. So why was Mr. Portsman so particular about getting room 1202? Not sure, but I bet it's because of something like his birthday is December 2nd. Yup, that's gotta be it. I can't think of another reason why. I can think of at least three. <sighs> why am I even wasting time thinking about this? door is locked tight. <laughs> but the old credit card trick wouldn't work here, huh, Miss Redgeworth? This is the office of a high prosecutor detective. These doors would be pretty ineffective if the average cat burglar could get through them. Aha! Uh -huh. So I guess only a great cat burglar could get through. C could get in. That must be who our culprit is. Might I advise you to return that conclusion to whatever pawn shop you bought it from? It's Mr. Portsman's personal basketball hoop. I can't believe he put something like this in the hallway of the prosecutor's office. Well, you know, it's actually pretty useful, sir. I haven't gotten lost trying to get to your office since it's been here. How long have I had the same office, and yet you still manage to get lost?
A minimalist yet classy door made of top quality wood. It's kind of majestic too. Fits in really well with the ambiance of the prosecutor's offices. Even Mr. Portman seems dignified just because he works behind one of, the, one of these. Nonsense. A man doesn't become more or less dignified because of where he works. Well, he still seems more dignified than Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne? I suppose custodial work can also be dignified. What is the basketball hoop doing here? Hey, didn't this used to be just outside next to the building a long time ago? So when and why was it moved indoors? I don't remember exactly, but I saw one of the officers drag it up here recently. Drag it? I heard that it wouldn't fit in the elevator, so the poor guy had to bring it himself. All the way up to the 12th floor. I, th I was like, isn't this the 12th floor? <laughs> What is a basketball doing here? It's Mr. Portsman's prized possession, sir. I heard he also plays soccer, do dodgeball, and even tennis. And not a single one of those sports are suitable to be played in a hallway. Okay, we get it. Don't look at my own door. Sure. 1202. These four numbers on a number plate alone proclaim this to be my office. Whoops. Hey, these number plates slide right out, sir. We have to be able to take the plate off when the room becomes vacant, you know. Although, the idea that it can be so easily removed is kind of... I don't see any signs of forced entry. And according to the guard, no signs that the door was picked either, sir. Meaning that the door really was opened with the key. Hmm. Did you happen to ask if any prints were lifted from the doorknob? Apparently the doorknob's clean as a whistle. Wiped, wiped, they think. Whoever this thief is, they did a good job of not leaving any clues behind. Interesting, interesting. On, uh... Ah, the deuce. Can I not deduce? Wait, what? Apparently, didn't I do this? I thought the door is locked tight. Yeah, I already did this. do this. Oh, I still can't deduce. It's a master key to every office in the building. Cool, thank you. Okay, that's just that. We can look at the prosecutor's badge. Each prosecutor's badge is engraved with the number of its owner on the back. Hmm, <laughs> numbers. As if we're not human on the inside like everyone else. Really? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Sorry. What? I'm so confused. That's not it. Actually, no, it is. Edgeworth's Mind Palace. No, it literally is. It's kind of funny. Miss Bird, I'm afraid there is a flaw in your, in your story. What? 
No way, pal! I mean, sir. You said that you locked up Mr. Portsman's office at around 1.30 a.m., correct? However, the master key had already been stolen at that time. Oh, nothing gets by you, Mr. Edgeworth. You saw that contradiction like a pro. I didn't. <laughs> I had totally forgot all about that, but thanks to you, I remember it now. You're right, it was around that very time that I realized the master key was missing. And? Well, I'm a security guard, sir. I couldn't just submit to losing the master key, could I? So I... I pretended to lock up his room, sir. You pretended? Yeah, I used my house key and made it look like I was locking up, sir. So in actuality, you never did relock the door, then. Well, I thought that maybe I could go lock it after I found the key. Come to think of it, I guess the door still hasn't been locked properly. Why are you looking up art? <laughs> Yeah, it's in it's in the Digect and Saiban where you have Sherlock Holmes. But apparently the reason that it wasn't like it hasn't been released overseas yet is because of uh it's because apparently Sherlock Holmes isn't like a uh, public domain or something. I don't know. I read about it like last night and I'm like, I mean, I guess that makes kind of sense, but that's kind of strange too. Huh, <sighs> okay, there it is. That's the one I wanted. Now I can deduce. <laughs> you might have figured out by now that I'm unable not to Google stuff. Yeah, I know. You're doing this to yourself every single time. <laughs> yeah, like technically it is like, um, but like, Apparently, yes, it, it, that, that's exactly it. It's the, it's the Doyle household that's like, no. He is by law not allowed to be in a relationship? What? What the hell? Yeah, I, I figured that. I figured that was what you meant, but like, that's so strange. He's by law. <laughs> it goes against the wishes of the family? Oh my god. That's so dumb. Anyways, uh... Yes, it's this. Eureka! There was a contradiction here between reality and the evidence. My phone is about to fall down to the fucking floor. If what Miss Bird has said is true, then why is this door locked tight? Huh? You know, you're right. Miss Bird, are you sure you didn't relock this door? I'm certain of it, sir. And I don't think Mr. Portsman noticed it himself that I hadn't. Which means, what, sir? It either means that he actually does have the key to his office, or that the door Miss Bird opened wasn't the one, wasn't this one at all, but a completely different one. She opened a different door, but how can you prove that? There's an easy way to find out. All we need to do is... We need to examine these. Prints on the number plate? The prints on the number plate. They will tell us all that we need to know. Everything? Really? Like what, sir? Like, well, for example, that's not it. <laughs> well, we know for sure that Detective Gumshoe's dinner will only consist of instant noodles. <laughs> Wow, that was amazing, sir. How did you know? Is that supposed to be a joke to cheer me up, Mr. Edgeworth? Y yes, that's it. Now then, we should get back to doing what we need to do, and that is... We need to examine these. Prints on... Door... Doorknob. Eh. 
Of course, I'm dumb. The prince on the doorknob will tell us everything. Hey, you. Yeah, you, pal. Do us a favor, favor and see if you, what you can lift from this, okay? Is it worth joking? He's trying his best. So, what did you find out? There's no need for such belligerent, nostril-flaring detective. Sorry, I found only Mr. Portsman and Mr. Fate's prints on this doorknob. So only two people's prints were found on this, huh? That's pretty decisive. Huh? I'm lost, sir. Thinking logically, a certain other person's print should be on this knob as well. Now then, whose print should also be on this doorknob? Maggie! You should find it odd that the prince of the person who unlocked this door absent? You mean... Yes, the door that Miss Bird opened could not have been this one, but a different one. Hmm. What have we here? What is this? Looks like a scrap of paper. I'll get it, sir. Let's see. There's something written on it. I, hmm, it looks like a note from the victim. I brought the three pieces of evidence by, just like we talked about on the phone. But it looks like you're out. I guess I'll catch up to you later, buddy. Yeah, and it's for Mr. Portsman. Interesting. Hmm. What's this? What are you looking at, sir? Oh, hey, how about a game? That's okay, detective. I just found the position of this hoop to be a little off. Hey, you're right, sir. I guess it shifted when someone made a series of sweet slam dunk. The positioning of the hoop is definitely unnatural. I better take note of this. Thank you. Poking around in this hallway has actually paid off quite handsomely. Huh? Uh, how so, sir? In a variety of different ways. I think it's time we had a little chat. With the real culprit of this case. Y you know who the killer is? Well, how, Mr. Edgeworth? As long as my, my logic is sound, then yes. The mastermind behind this murder is none other than Mr. Portsman. What? Mr. Portsman? I knew it. What exactly? That exactly. That's exactly what my logic senses were telling me, too. I suspected it was him from the instant he accused Maggie of being the killer, sir. They all look so small. I know, right? They're so cute. Eh. That is anything but logical. Lady and gentlemen, prepare yourself. Selves. Come what may, it's time to knock on Truth's door. Mr. Portsman, I finished processing the bloody letters, sir. All right, let's take. Let me take a gander at it. Has it here? Okay, looking good. You there? Take good care of this. Well, if it isn't Detective Gumshoe, end of the line for you, Portsman. We got you now. Call off your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. No, call off your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. We know, Mr. Jacques Portsman, that you are the guilty party in this case. You must be pretty upset getting chased out of your own room. I'd be mad too. So I guess you can stay, if you promise to stay out of our way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of a pro prosecutor doing his job. Hm, I can see right through the unsightly paper-thin mask you wear upon your cowl. <laughs> Who'd have ever thought thought it would be, would come to this, God? It's so hard to read this. Actually, come to think of it, your men mentor mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? I'm just like, don't fucking bring him up in front of me. The legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there was always this incessant chatter about forged evidence with that guy. Really teaches me that I've got to stay on the lookout for false accusations, you know? You're done trying to play mind games with me because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for now is explaining yourself. Although that too will only dig your hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. 
Well, aren't we full of ourselves? Even though we have, even though you have yet to prove anything. I have no idea what sort of ha harebrained idea you have in mind, but there is a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Besides, how, may I ask, do you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Look, I feel bad doing this to you, but I've got work to do, so we're done here. I don't think he calls his own door a truth store, but... Man, you didn't really miss a lot. <laughs> this dude looks like a snob. His name is fucking Jacques Sportsman. <laughs> Jacques Portsman, I mean. I just want to call him Sportsman. <laughs> Sorry, but we are not finished yet. You're stubborn. I suppose you're basing your accusations on something? I'll show you what I'm basing my accusation on. With evidence. I'm like, with evidence? Okay. So scroll down. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what I thought, actually, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's here. That's the key. I believe you were able to open my office door with the master key, no less. Objection. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on for a sec. I never laid a finger on that key, as you already know. Precisely. You were able to open my door without lifting a single finger. Well, maybe you did, but only to direct. That's right. You use your finger to direct this person to open my door with the key. Maggie. You had asked Miss Bird to open your own office door for you, yes? Yeah, I kind of forgot my key at home. Happens a bit too often for my taste, you know. But the room you had Miss Bird open at that time was not your own room, was it? What? You have quite the imagination. But why don't we ask the girl herself whose door she opened, shall we? Um, I'm certain that it was Mr. Portsman's door, sir. I checked the number plate to make sure I was opening the right door, sir. See, Miss Bird backs up my story. Yet what if you had misled her to fool her into thinking what you wanted? Ha! Huh. Then how do you suppose I did that? By switching the number plates on your door on our doors, for example. That's right! They do slide up pretty easily. Furthermore, you then used one other thing to give a very strong impression. That the door she was opening was yours, and not in fact mine. Ah, the hoop. What was it that Mr. Portsman used to make Miss Bird think that it was his own? His room. What? The basketball hoop, sir? It's quite a peculiar fixture in any hallway, let alone a hallway in this building. Which is why it left an unusual... An, an, usually strong impression with you. It's an object perfectly suited to sit just outside the office of a peculiar prosecutor. That's very true, sir. Because there was a basketball hoop si sitting there, I thought the door I was opening had to be Mr. Portsman's. There are signs that the hoop has, has been moved. To sit in front of my office, to be sure. I, I see. So that's how you throw suspicion on people. Thanks for the tip, for the tip. But I think your conjecture is a little off the racetrack. Now you're just spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that I was in my room the entire time. You don't have a single reason to suspect me. So he intends to claim his innocence to the end, does he? I'm as pure and innocent as my jackets. And Miss Bird is as dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. My jacket's not dirty. I'll have you know I just washed it yesterday. Please calm down, for I intend to show who is the one truly covered in slime here. Hmm. Yeah, let's write the notes. was a lie. What are you talking about? How was that a lie? This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. 
a note? It was left under your door. Or did you not notice? And right here it says, But you're out. You were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then, where were you? And what were you doing? Shall I explain it in full detail for you? You were busy snooping around in my room. The very room you had Miss Bird open for you. Th th that's just nonsense. You have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me. Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. No way. I mean, it has to be his door, right? I had your door dusted for prints. Yes! My door? Huh, what for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You're sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything, and definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. For prints? What do they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way, if she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Get wrecked, Portsman. Further, all of the prints on my office door's knob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it's because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you stole... You stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you out. Possibly because you heard some sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Portsman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. As I said when you had the gun to my back, no one gets away with committing murder in my office. Just what's so funny, pal? Well, that look of stiff seriousness on the face of this office's finest prosecutor, as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edgeworth just explained it all, and he even backed it up. You're the murderer. Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already. And as I said earlier, it's all so circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you checked my doorknob for, pr for prints? Well, I can readily confess that I had wiped that knob down as well. Huh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the door down. The knob down as soon as I could, could after you opened the door. You're wearing out your tent jacket. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's and my own prints would be on there. You! You made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the note Jim left for me, do you know exactly when that was? For all we know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like, early evening, for example. Are you saying you failed to notice a note in your doorway? Hey, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although that's no excuse. Now that's just a flat-out lie! There's no way you didn't notice a note that size! Oh, but you can't prove that, can you? See something, Mr. Edgeworth. Back me up here, sir! This one makes a good point. You can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now as we, as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for us all, for all of us, if I had told you sooner. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had the unfortunate confrontation, confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Let's go around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Do you really think it's all it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like and you'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, yes sir. I'll go check out this alibi, sir. Be right back. M Mr. Edgeworth, sir. I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. 
The guy saw in criminal affairs that they saw him at around 2 a.m. You see? All of the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. Okay, I press everything apparently. <laughs> you are correct, it was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're, you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was 2. Ooh, giving testimony like a pro. Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. Hold it. Hmm. It is as you say, however. Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Oh, come now. I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? Beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh, well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. So you pay the Criminal Affairs Department a visit. Yup, right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Hold it. Hmm, well we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Y yes sir, a number of detectives said they saw you at around that time. See, I have the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Uh -huh. Impossible. He actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why the sudden sullen look on your face? Did you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I think we've reached the end of our line, and it's time to get off this crazy train. You there! Sir! Please escort the young lady out, but remember, be gentle. M Maggie! Detective Gumshoe! Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. If I only had a clue, did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? I need to calmly think this through one more time. And with logic. Alright. Hmm... Oops. Damn. What are we thinking? Because I'm not too sure. I mean, the fights in Disarray don't really have anything to do with the other ones, so... Okay, it's correct. There were two pu bullets left at the scene of the crime. One that robbed Mr. Faith of his life. And one that nearly robbed me of my jacket. However, the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once. Meaning that it is entirely imp entirely possible that a second gun was used in my office tonight. But seeing as how the killer had to steal Mr. Faith's gun, I doubt the killer had another gun up their sleeve. Therefore, the second gun could have been in it the property of an entirely different person. Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight. This just keeps going! <laughs> Okay, then that kind of makes sense, I guess. Supposing there was yet another visitor tonight. 
That would also resolve the issue of why my shelves were upended twice. We know that the shelves were disturbed once before and once after the murder. So it shouldn't be much of a stretch to think that it was the work of two different people. Once by the person who stole the victim's gun and then killed him with it. And once again after the murder by our second culprit. Who was the owner of, of the second gun. If we suppose that the second culprit's gun was the one that, that was pointed at my back. Objection! Mr. Portsman, it seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great, so you've finally come to your senses. Mr. Edgeworth! Sir, what are you saying? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person I ran into was the killer, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? The person I ran into was just your average thief. Thief? But, sir, doesn't that cause some sort of contradiction in the facts? Not at all. It seems to me that the killer was someone else. And it means that in actuality, two culprits stole into my office tonight. W what do you mean, two? It explains both why my shelves were disturbed twice and how there were two guns. Mr. Portsman tricked Miss Bird and gained entry into my office. Now you're just leading, leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. If you could please go along with my hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portsman. In the end, if you really are innocent, you should have nothing to worry about. Now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portsman was out to steal something from me. Which is why he checked my secret safe and ransacked my shelves. This is the first time. So then, this would be when the files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else, who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith? Why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? He probably had business with Mr. Portsman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when he noticed sounds coming from my office, would be my guess. Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? And he must have thought it was odd, so he came into this office to check it out. Correct, and as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portsman, Mr. Faith probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portsman was not so merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him, and silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. This was the moment in which the first shot was fired, the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portsman wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that because he had also left the fake dying message behind. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, then all would be solved. However, there was yet another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets complicated. There was another? Visitor, sir? Yes, and this other person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. Portsman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new visitor had no way of knowing that, and so they stole the master key from the security guard's room. And then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seems the thief found her price. Stolen zero file, right, sir? Correct. Only, just as the thief was about to leave with the, with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. So the shelves getting messed up twice and the two bullets. It was all because two different people were doing those things at two different times. Precisely. So now do you see, Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief and was in fact- and was not in fact Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's visit. So funny, pal. Absolutely splendid. S your scenario explains everything. Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth, after all. But you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right. 
It would indeed render my alibi, which was which has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Ah, it's Regworth. You can't let him get away with that, sir. But he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I, I don't believe this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. You know something? I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Regworth. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. Eh. I'm stimming so hard while playing his drum. I'm just sitting here, just like bouncing my leg up and down. If, 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 I, if I look like I'm vibrating, that's why. <laughs> God, my, my mic is kind of bothering me. I don't like that it's... Wait. Wait, am I dumb or am I dumb? I can literally do this. I can literally tilt it. Oh my god. I have uh, I have a much better view of my fuck. Of my monitor now. All right. Sure. There we go. That's a bit better. Ah. Fancy mic movement. <laughs> That thief you ran into should be your real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for the thief right now. They might still be nearby. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down to criminal affairs. So I can't be expected to know what, it, what happened around here after I left. So you think we should be out there looking for the thief? Of course. Now isn't the time to be wasting time on dead-end dis discussions. I don't think it's all, all dead-ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? I know he's lying. I know he was here, at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to go. Prove- Way to prove it. That's it. Music though. Why didn't you go there with G Mr. Faith? Well, that's because he said he was tired and was going to take a quick nap. You know those sofas in the hallway? He likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. And what of the evidence he brought? And they were things related to yesterday's case. Just two items. A gun and a pendant. Interesting. This piece of testimony seems too crucial to let slip through the cracks. You brought me two items. A gun and a pendant. They are related to yesterday's case. Do -do 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 -do. The note, what was this again? Three pieces. Ooh. Only two pieces? I believe the proper phrase, is, phrase here is You fail. E excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Portsman. As you intend to keep evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here is a piece I think you should read. Carefully. Huh? It says that Mr. Faith was bringing three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. I can't believe to get tripped up by simple arithmetic. Where is the missing piece of evidence? I... It's... You have it, don't you? Only the guilty would make such a face. Detective Gumshoe. You don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from you. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. Don't come any closer, I'm warning you. Man, he's just like, dodging. <laughs> this is all part of the investigation, pal. So don't even think about stopping me. <laughs> no! Ha 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 ha. Hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir. 
Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. But why would you hide something like that? Hm. There is only one reason why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because it would in unequivocally point to the person being point to that person himself as the real killer. <laughs> Let's examine this videotape in a little more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. The KG-8 incident? That's a police case number, sir. Does that mean this video is evidence from that case? Interesting. However, what's recorded on this isn't what's important right now. Let's give the casing a thorough once over. Ah, interesting. It's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean, this might be Detective Fate's blood? No, no, you've got it all wrong. Hm, no amount of denial can save you. We have but to run a blood test to find the truth. Mm -hmm. You told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious. Was it at the moment of, the, of his death? Did Detective Faith have, his, have this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that. Not even if we were to examine this, this tape for fingerprints. <laughs> if I had to take a guess, I'd say that the only ones on here would belong to the murderer, murderers you and Mr. Faith. No, impossible. I, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Mass is just screaming. Love that for him. He fucking ate his metal! <laughs> oh my fucking god, he fucking did. The Portsman has been placed under arrest for the murder of Detective Buddy Faith. Buddy Faith. Buddy Faith, sir. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab techs on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. The blood work came back, and it was definitely Mr. Fate's blood on there. And as a bonus, they were also able to lift a few of Mr. Fate's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills outside the courtroom. I'm impressed beyond words, sir. It was nothing. I'm just sorry you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please accept my apologies. I was nothing, really, compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky that I was that it was only a burglary and a murder this time, sir. <laughs> Maggie, please. If it had been a hold-up or a hostage situation, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person. Something tells me we should have hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir. But Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor and why would you say he was corrupt well i heard that there were a number of suspicious things related to this court case his court cases no not any trials it's just gonna be like what, what, what you saw now saw now like just like investigations and like talking there's even rumors about how some of the evidence he use, uses is forged sir forged evidence huh and they say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Oh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession. We never did. We never did get around to asking what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah, whenever we got near that topic, he just clammed up. Although we can be pretty certain it was to steal something. This is just between you and me, sir, but... There's a rumor that some sort of huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh? Well, well. With Mr. Portsman not willing to divulge anything, it certainly lends cre credence to that rumor. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? Then Mr. Portsman isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather that there's there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out the significance of this piece of evidence.
Oh yeah. This. The person who stole this file. The other villain of the night. Yeah, I wonder who he was. And what happened to the stolen pages? I wonder. Who in the world was it that held me up at gun gunpoint? Miss Redworth, sir! Yes? I came across this while I was pro processing your office earlier, sir. This card! What is it, sir? Is that a bird or something on there? It's not just any bird. It's the mark of, a, of the raven. A three-legged raven. Even you should know what this is, detective. Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? That great thief everyone's talking about. Yes, it is the mark of the great thief Yatagarasu. Under the mark of a legendary bird, the Yatagarasu is noble to the end, a modern Robin Hood. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appears and vanishes at will. Though we don't know much about this thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. Close enough, the Yakuza. <laughs> uh, the Yatagarasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. The theft is always performed in silence and always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found is sent out to the mass media. Along with this single card. Jacuzzi! <laughs> Although it has been a while since the last Yatagarus... I don't know how it's, if it's yatara, Yatagarasu, Yatagarasu, <laughs> or Yatagarasu. <laughs> now I'm in hot water with the Japanese mafia. Shut up. <laughs> it has been a while since the Yatagarasu's last appearance. Hey, Miss Regworth, look, something's written on the back. What? Let me see. It's the location of where the thief put the stolen files. So the person who stole the contents of the file was the Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu. Organization. Quite a few keywords that are popping up in this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief Yatagarasu. Looking back. Can't say I didn't see these events coming. For they were heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. That's it, that's the first case. We're only two hours in. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna just go to the next one. Turn about airlines. God, this fucking made me laugh so hard the first time I played it. Well, someone took his drama pills today. Huh. So, what do you think of the game so far? Where <laughs> they were heralded. <laughs> oh! Oh, did you did you oh, did you see the silhouettes of the murder that occurred in my office? The return of the great thief Yatagarasu. Thinking back. Everything began on that fateful day, two days ago. Everything began high up in the air, 9,000 feet in the air, to be precise. Thank you for flying iFly Airlines. We are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. We are asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. Listen, you're, you're, you're gonna lose your shit. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, it's funny every single time. He's just laying there. But, like, they didn't have, like, a proper, like, laying, like, sprite. So it's pretty much just him just, like, flipped over 90 degrees on the floor. And, like, eight posing. That's it. What kind of airplane is this? He is eight posing. <laughs> Mm -mm. I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare. 6.13, huh? I guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. Huh. Slight turbulence indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. For your safety, we ask that you, you return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected on the flight. Though admittedly, I am less uncomfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Hmm? What's this? A travel wallet? But it's not mine. How did someone else's travel wallet wind up in my pocket? My head. I want this headache go away. Sounds like you 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 have a bit of a hangover, my dude. <laughs> I'll take care of this travel wallet later, or hand it off to an attendant. Mm -hmm. From earthquake-like turbulence to an elevator. No poor baby. Hmm. What am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, I know full well why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a young child. Listen, you can't just get over childhood trauma like that. It's okay, Edgeworth. You're allowed to have feelings. <laughs> I was caught up in a murder that happened in an ele elevator. But how long am I going to let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. What in the world happened? Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. He, he, he's dead! Please calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? You, you murderer! What? No! You have it all wrong. It wasn't me. Look at this fucking plane! <laughs> Edgy, I was 10 when I got a sewing machine's needle in my eye?! How did you get it in your eye?! I'm sorry? How... It broke while... Oh my god. That sounds awful. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh my god. Everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your flight attendants today, Rhoda Tenero. Unfortunately, we have just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse and it was a murder. What? M murder? What's going on with this flight? Everyone, please calm down. There is no reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. Okay, actually, speaking of, like, childhood trauma, I guess. With, like... Minor things. Um... What are what are, the, what are they called? Like, uh, sparklers. I held, like, a sparkler when I was, like, three. And I burnt my hand. I've been terrified of them ever since. It's like anything fire-related, it's like, nah-uh. 
Oh my god. Sorry for asking, but like, is your eye like fucked up from that? <laughs> or did it heal nicely? Okay, I'm glad it healed. Because I can imagine it could have gotten really bad. Not that it wasn't bad, but it could have, like, been, like, irreparable. Probably. Though I guess, actually, the, the, the eye heals easily, so... This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. But, but, but someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me off! <laughs> Let me off? Where the hell are you gonna go? <laughs> I must walk face first to a sharp wooden stick and an injured just beneath my right eye. Ouch. Please, there is no need to feel threatened. We have already apprehended the culprit. I ask that everyone please remain calm. The heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? Give me a parachute, I'll figure it out from here. <laughs> oh my god. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor, and I assure you, I am not the killer. Ha! <laughs> Being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, buddy. Now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. So you say. However, I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence. To back me up. What kind of incriminating evidence is she to- Oh! Oh, that, that was her. Sorry, never mind. Is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine. And the direction it's going in. Oh my god, I just noticed! Man fucking brought the chess set on the plane with him. Sir? Can you fucking not? Oh my god. I'm not about to just sit idly by while I get accused of murder. Miss Teneiro, is it? Yes? I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance? To do what? A chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you meant by incriminating evidence just now. To accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give a proper defense. Can the professional flight attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? You have a point. Very well, I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you, ha what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make it quick. Of course, as you wish. Good, very well then. Let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. Is her hair brown a square? I never really thought about- Oh yeah, you're right! <laughs> How the hell you do that? <laughs> she has just fucking... Children's, like, uh, blocks in her hair. Around her butt. <laughs> what the fuck? I never even noticed that. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Miss Redgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. 
So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over as soon as we are as soon as we land. When what we got here actually? Trouble bullets. Pick up from the elevators. Isn't mine, so whose is it? Body found at 6 15 a.m. inside the elevators. Stopped at the first floor lounge. Sky magazine. Yeah, sure. Interesting. Flight itinerary. Nice. How he died though, that's that's what we're gonna figure out. The victim was seated in first class like myself, but I don't know his name. An iFly Airlines flight attendant charged with taking care of first class. Okay, we only have those two so far. So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over as just as soon as we land. That's it? That's your evidence? I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Ragsworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. Dripping of the murder weapon? What? The, the travel wallet? <laughs> Mr. Nero! Wh what's with the yelling all of a sudden? A uh, force of habit. Well, it doesn't matter. It's Teneiro. I'm like, is it Teneiro or is it Teneiro? I don't know. You say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood. Is that correct? Yes, all that blood. Drip, drip, drip. Just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so-called professional flight attendant training has failed you. W what? I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do you know what this is? It's a travel wallet, right? But it looks a little big and bulky. The thing you saw me holding when I discovered the dead body in the elevator. Was this very travel wallet, Miss, Miss Tenero? What? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I am the killer? That I killed him with a travel wallet? But... But... No, but I... I saw blood dripping from the wallet! I, I know I did! As you can see, this wallet is clearly stained, but if you would be so kind as to take a whiff. I think you'd agree it's only grape juice. Ah, th then, then... That's right, you mistook grape juice for blood. Also, I don't know if I already mentioned this at some point, but it actually is grape juice. It's because the creator's like, favorite drink is grape juice. It's not wine, it's, it's actually grape juice. People are like, oh my god, it's wine. No, it's not, it's actually grape juice. The murder weapon dripping with blood does not in fact exist. No! There, that should clear up that pesky situ pesky accusation. Wait just a sec. That is, I mean even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show what's inside, please. She's trembling and the tacked on police at the end. Sounds like I've got her. There's no need to look inside. Even you can tell from its appearance that it's light. No, I can't be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wallet for myself. Oh, she's a persistent one. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Miss Tenero, if you would be so kind as to open the wallet and check its contents for me. Alright, I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. Seems that this passport is all that's in here. As you saw, there is nothing but a passport inside. This renders your wallet was the murder weapon argument moot. Wouldn't you agree? Please hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it now? Well, I was wondering, whose passport is it really? Can I take a look? Why not? I'm rather curious myself. This is... Just as I thought. This travel wallet belonged to Mr. Ackby Hicks. Which makes it the victim's property. You... You stole the victim's wallet! Didn't you? How dare you! You said it yourself. You claimed to be holding this wallet in your hands when I found you. 
Perhaps I did misconstrue the wallet for the murder weapon. But it seems that I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. As you claimed, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with, with the vile deed. <laughs> she's just fucking... She's reaching so hard. She's like, oh my god, I know exactly what happened. And just doesn't know what happened at all. It ain't rocket science. It apparently is to these people. <sighs> I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Miss Mr. Hicks' money, weren't you? What money? It was empty. So even though I didn't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. How can I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? <sighs> I wonder if I might get a word in, Miss Taneiro. What is it now? Miss Taneiro. I wonder if you noticed the contradiction within your own testimony. Wh what are you talking about? Lady, I travel in first class. I drive a sports car. Do I really need petty change? <laughs> Simply put, as you saw with your own eyes, the only thing inside Mr. Hicks' wallet was his passport. Huh. If I really was after his money, then why would I steal a penniless travel wallet? Ah, oh, but that's right, you, Miss Redworth, you had, you didn't know it was empty when you stole it. You would like to think that, but that's not possible. What do you mean it's not possible? There is no way the killer didn't know that the wallet was empty to begin with. Oh, and what makes you so sure? How could I show her that the killer knew the wallet to be empty from the get-go? Oh, here. Apparently. If you would recall the crime scene. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me look at the crime scene, actually, because I didn't do that. Ah, there is money on the ground. Or on the floor, I guess you could say. If you would recall the crime scene. I admit that the wallet was probably not empty at the time of the murder. That's pretty evident by the bills and cards strewn about the inside of the elevator. Oh no! I think you've come to realize the problem with your logic. I would surmise that the victim's wallet fell out during their struggle. And that's when it content its contents emptied onto the floor of the elevator. I doubt the killer could have missed such an occurrence. Then, then you're saying... Yes, according to your supposi supposition, if I were the killer, I would have been going after a wallet I knew to be empty. And since I clearly was not attempting to gather th the scattered money, it renders your argument of theft completely invalid. I... 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 Forgive me, please! Hey, what the heck? Are you saying that attendance wrong? So that guy isn't the killer? Ha, don't believe it, everyone. It's a trick. Mm -hmm. Will you all please be quiet? Miss Tenero. Yes? 
You lost your cool when you saw the dead body. Plus, the lounge was dark and looking into the light from the, from the elevator. It's easy to see how you mistook the wallet in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought that I was the killer. Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you for releasing me. Someone is speaking in wingdings. What is it now? Miss Tenero, if you could please translate, I'd be much obliged. It sounds like Virginian, but I... I don't understand any of it. There is another attendant on this flight who... I said that he is giving the runabout. Don't require an interpreter. I speak English just well, see? You, the attendant. Y yes, sir. I want this person to be under the arrest. Until we arrive at the airport. I'm sorry, sir, but what exactly are you hoping for? What is it you want? I'm finished talking with to the likes of you. Please, I would like to hear why you would like me to be held under arrest until we land. You! How dare you try to waste my time! You were the one who stuck your nose into my affairs! I wanted to spend even at least one more second with my precious art. You have no time for other things. I know what you are. I see through you. Insolvent. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it in English. Well, I'd hope that I don't dissolve in water, but I don't think that's what you meant. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. Zinc Leblanc... Leblanc... <laughs> Zinc Leblanc the second. I am a very wealthy man in the Virginia. But I am not an ordinary rich man. I am an art dealer. A rich seller of beauty. Oh no. That's too bad. Oh, it's only nine. So I, I'm, I'm gonna sit here for a while longer at least. Good night, Bengi. Thanks for staying here for a while. You know I appreciate you. Hope you have a good night's sleep. <laughs> Which is the solvent water is calling at you. Which yes, Mister Leblanc. What did you mean just now? Pardon. <clears throat> um, when you said that Mister Edgeworth was giving me the runabout, I have to explain. Unbelievable! I will say it once and only once. I do not have even a second to waste. Time is money, as they say. Yes, and yet you continue to blather on. I saw it. Yes, I did. I saw the victim go onto the elevator. Going down to the lounge. It was exactly at six o'clock. And what's the significance of that time? At six, he says. Wait, you saw him at six? Huh? What's the matter, Miss Redgeworth? He understands, I see. Miss Attendant, what time did you discover the body? Well, it was a little after that patch of turbulence, so I would say around 6.15. <gasps> Hicks was his name, was it? Then I say that man was... Man Hicks was ki killed in the 15 minute time span. And the only person in the lounge at that time was this prosecutor, yes? Yeah, I was in my seat the whole time. Me too, I was watching the movie and enjoying a fine glass of grape juice. I was still eating, still haven't finished, see? The other passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose. No compliance. I see. Not a single word against this, right? I have no way of discounting what you have put forth at this point, but it wasn't me. Oh, so you say. But you do ha But do you have, what do you say, the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth, are you really the culprit after all? Mr. LeBlanc, I suppose you are quite certain in what you saw. Enough to give testimony? I think so. Of course, I was looking at that man the whole time. He was playing with that annoying little, um, small machine the whole time. Machine? Yes, that's what you people call it in English, yes? It was making me crazy with a click, 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 click. From that description, it sounds like some sort of small computer. I believe what Mr. LeBlanc is talking about is a cell phone. I have to say that I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. A simple cell phone. A laptop or organizer, I can see, but that's kind of low budget. <laughs> Except for nowadays, you know. 
I hate that noisy little machine in his hand. Not a fragment of beauty. All it produces is ugly sounds. Okay. Anyway, I know what I saw. Good for you, my dude. Miss Tenero. Yes? I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. What? You want to examine the crime scene? If you would grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I can produce the real culprit. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that fox in the duck pen. Yes, I think that is how you say it in English. It is fox guarding the hen house. And I believe my innocence was proven earlier. And if I'm proven and if I'm given the chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Miss Tenero, if you want to, if you wait until we arrive, there is a good chance that some evidence will have been destroyed by then. I understand. Let me see what captain what the captain has to say. This should not be approved. Please, Mr. LeBlanc. In an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. Now please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I'll be right back. You're not planning to erase evidence when you are doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Ha, huh, we will see. Mr. Edgeworth, you have the captain's permission to investigate the crime scene. What? Unbelievable! I am in your debt, Mr. Tenero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? Of course, I see no problem with that stipulation. It's only natural, as I am still a suspect in this case. <laughs> I take full responsibility and will catch Mr. Edgeworth's every move. I hope this is reassurance enough that there will be no, no, no foul play. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, shall we, shall we proceed? If you should need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. Okay, cool. It's time to head to the scene of the crime, the first floor lounge. Can I? Yes! Oh, that's right. I was in the middle of recreating a chess game. Just an observation, but aren't there too many red knights around that lone blue pawn? <laughs> Nonsense. It simply shows that the blue pawn is no match for the red knight's might. Okay, <laughs> sure. Let's say that. I want to thank you for your help back there, Mr. Nero. It was nothing. You should thank the captain for granting you permission. And just so everything is perfectly clear, I still don't trust you to that to that extent. I don't want you to think your standing with me has changed. I see. I will bear that in mind. I received an order from the captain earlier. He wanted you to know that. We reserve the right to stop your investigation if we feel you are not making progress. And when we do, he asks that you please return to your seat at the time. So my time runs out at this... And his crew's... Dis so my time runs out at his... At, at his and his crew's discretion, is it? I have to find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's testimony before it times up. I understand. By the way, is there any place you can think of where the killer might uh, might hide on board? I don't think so. After every first class passenger was accounted for at his or her seat, we made a thorough search of the plane. As for business and economy class, no one can move between those two classes in first class without a staff keyboard. Keyboard? Key card, I mean. And we found no record of a key card being used at all. Which means that I have first class killer. Have a first class killer on my hands. At least I know that much for sure. One other thing. No one else has been allowed near this, this crime scene since the murder was discovered either. Yeah. It's fucking go. Oh my god, that scared me. <laughs> oh. Now then, let's get started. Well, where should we start from? Hmm, let's start with Mr. LeBlanc's t statements. The crime occurred between 6 a.m. and 6.15 a.m. During that interval, interval, uh, the, the only person in the lounge was myself, which would make me the prime suspect. However, since I did not kill Mr. Hicks, it means that the killer was around somewhere. If you are to believe what you say is true, then yes. Hmm, the first order of business will be to gather information to win your trust. What floors does this elevator service? 
Only the first and second, although it can also go down to the cargo hold. However, that requires, requires a flight crew keycard. So the only floors accessible to passengers are the first and the second, huh? I wonder what, what was hanging off of this lanyard. Something's missing from his from this picture. What if I could just put my finger on it? What is this sinister looking figure on the floor here? Oh, that's a piggy bank of our company mascot, Mr. Ifly. It's just one of the many pieces of merchandise we sell at our in-flight shop. And this bank is a limited edition and is so popular that we're down to our last one. You have an in-flight shop? It looks like a pug. <laughs> it does. Yes, it's just beyond the lounge to the right. The shutter to the store is clo closed at the moment, but it was open the whole flight up until Mr. Hicks' body was discovered. There's blood on here. Could this have been the murder weapon? Hmm. There's something sticking out of his pockets. Hope he won't mind if I take a look at what's inside. Hmm? It's a picture. It looks like it was taken inside a building somewhere. Money is strewn all over the floor of the elevator. I would guess uh, it was all in Mr. Hicks' wallet at some point. Okay, it's just the same. I thought anyone was expecting to find a dead body in an elevator on this flight. So Mr. Hicks, he's really dead? Yes. She's trembling, although I can't fault her for that when there's a corpse right here right there. Mr. Hicks, if you're really dead, then please answer yes. I see she's over the trembling now, although a new symptom seems to have appeared. Anyway, I should focus on the victim's body. Let's see. There's blood on the back of Mr. Hicks' head. Could this be the cause of death? He appears to have been struck very hard. He isn't dead, he's just sleeping. Even his glasses are broken. What can we deduce? Can we deduce anything? Ah, indeed we can. Indeed we hecking can. Let's go here, let's go here and deduce. Yes. Eureka! Sir Hicks' machine is nowhere to be found. His machine? Ahem, <coughs> his cell phone, Mr. Nero. Ah, so I guess... Because it's not here. Yes, I think we can safely deduce that the killer took it. Interesting. There's some spilled grape juice in front of the elevator. I assume it was spilled during the turbulence. We well, must clean that up or someone might get hurt. Aha! Uh -huh. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I found some very important evidence. What is the important piece of evidence in this scene? Oh. Take that. Footy prints? <laughs> what is it? They're a little smudged, but I think we can both agree they are a set of footprints. So you think... Yes, these belong to our killer. Well, then maybe we should check the shoot sizes of everyone on, on, in first class. I don't think that will be of any help to us. Unfortunately, the prints are too smudged, which will make it hard to get a definitive match. Well, I see. Even reading the... The guide is... <laughs> Time for some logic, apparently. Cool. True, there wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself right before the tur turbulence. 
But if the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then that's a different story. A statue with blood on it lying next to the body of a man who was beaten to death. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, I think I figured something out. Y yes, what is it? The way the blood is on it is on this, it looks like it matches up with the wound on his head. Well, aren't we deserving of the master of the obvious title? Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Don't you think that's worth investigating? Hmm, it would appear that this figurine is our murder weapon. I just knew it! I mean, I can't think of any other connection. Hmm, perhaps Master of the Oblivious would be more befitting. Edgeworth, please. <laughs> hmm, interesting. In the elevator and spill grape juice. I have it! I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. I can prove that someone other than myself was here around the time of the murder. What? R really? Yes, it's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the red in the pudding, or rather, the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here confess to me that is this very fact. That someone exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim was dead, that would mean a second person. But couldn't the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, oh, but if you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which means... Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There was actually one other person inside the elevator. Yeehaw. Hmm, what's going on over there? Unforgivable! This is unforgivable! Do you understand what I'm saying? The movie is late! It is the same level of bad as if the plane arrived late. Um, but the movie... What? I'm not talking to you anymore. You are just wasting my time. What is the matter, Mr. Leblanc? If there is no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do. I need not to sit down. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you're innocent yet? If you would like, I'll prove my innocence to you right now. What? Nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be more, most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine, suit yourself. I'm certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes? Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. Mr. LeBlanc's conclusion seems to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the, of the, at the supposed time of the murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony. If you think you can destroy it, then come, let me see. Hurry, do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? I mean, you're on a plane. The fuck are you so stressed about? Like, just fucking... Sit down. Fucking chill. Like... Why is he so irritated? I am the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to, to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow and fast. sleep. God, that's like all I did when I flew to Japan. I was like... Well, actually, we had, like, um, screens in front of our seats that we could, like, play games on and uh, also watch movies on. So, that helped a lot. But it was like, when I was, like, done with that, I was like, meh. Whatever. And I just went to sleep, woke up, Watched a movie, got something to eat, went to sleep again. And for the entire time, not once did I go to the bathroom. 
Don't ask me how I fucking did it. Because I had water. I I, I wasn't dehydrated or anything. <laughs> I just like dislike going to airplane bathrooms so intensely that I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> My body just sat down in protest and went, nope, not happening. I didn't go to the bathroom until after we had landed at Narita. Until after I had arrived at uh, the capsule hotel. Anyways, uh, let me scroll down to you. Okay, press on the first, okay. Mr. LeBlanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course I saw what was inside. You are sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? It's like 20 hours. No bathroom break. Yes, the only person inside was that Mr. Hicksman. Hmm, this last outburst is a bit too important to let go. Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There is a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a good look at the area in front of the elevator. There, at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and will you admit you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is the set of grape juice footprints. Uh, footprints? Yes, the ones that lead from the from within the elevator out out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks exited the elevator alive. There must have been another person in the elevator with Hick Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games, so why don't you tell us the truth? Can you please translate for us? Um no way, that's totally impossible, I guess is what he said. Ma'am, why do you have your tits out? <laughs> no way, that's totally impossible. I know there was no other person in there. I saw with my own eyes. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right. He doesn't seem to be lying. But then, what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Close your boob window. Mr. LeBlanc, please, just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? <laughs> I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I, I was always checking the time over and over again. I happened to follow, what, follow that man with my eyes when he passed me, and I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. But I swear there was no one else inside. No one. Mr. LeBlanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Uh, uh, no, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. We're checking the time, yes. This Why were you so attentive to the time? Because, because something unforgivable was happening. Hmm, come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time. Return back to me, m my time. Oh my god. Return back to me, my time, in money. You understand the point. Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Hmm, a summary of a plot and the start time. Interesting. So the movie started at 6. And lasted for 2 hours? Interesting. They were supposed to show License to Love, Laugh, Maim and Murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I look forward greatly to that movie. 
I took my pocket watch whenever possible so I could not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not wrong, it matched the schedule. But the movie was still late. Very, very late. Your pocket watch. I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's alright. But... Fuck! Oh my god, he just talks forever. <laughs> Ugh. I wanted to see would not start, so I checked my pocket watch many times. My watch is set to my destination's time. I always set it when I board the plane. Okay, never mind. That's the one I have to. I wasn't aware that you got two of them. Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. Now if your watch has been set to our destination's time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth its six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe this Sky magazine, clocks on this flight run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, the movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Mr. Tenero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right, it was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Shengfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at the time. So right now we are still running on Virginian time. What? Time difference between Virginia and our destination is nine hours. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior, at 3 a.m. One million cents, okay. It should clear up all of the remaining accusations. So this basically widens the time frame for the time of the death, right? Is he okay? No, he's not. On a, on a more positive note, at least he hasn't, mis he hasn't missed the movie yet. Like, it hasn't started yet. <laughs> yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. It means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is, where was Mr. Hicks during that spawn span of time, and what was he doing? Um, I got something to say. And you are? Yeah, um, oh, I'm Cammy Meal. I'm a flight attendant. And um, what is it you wish to, wish to say? Well, I think your story is a little different from how I remember it. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right, he pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point. Ah, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer in Zhengfa, correct? Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m., according to our clocks. Like we were making a brief stop to refuel and transfer cargo in the Republic of Shengfa between 4 and 5 a.m. We ask that all passengers remain on board at that time. Thank you for your cooperation. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off or... Got off or... Got off or on in Shengfa. What about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gotten on or off, but eventually everyone including Kami and myself came back on the plane. So basically, I can assume that no one left or got on got on since our initial takeoff. Kami looks high. <laughs> she fucking does. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. 
Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you, Mr. Ackby, 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 Hicks, was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. All right, and that puts the time of the murder between 5 and 6.15 a.m. Okay, now what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zhengfu. Huh! Ah! You! You were here the whole time from 5, yes? And you are the only one who could be the killer. Mr. Edgeworth, were you really here this in this lounge the entire time from 5 a.m. onwards? His name is Apme. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. But then, how do we explain the footprints? It's not that obvious. This man waited for Mr. Hicks here in this lounge, waited to kill him. And then he put the corpse into the elevator. That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken, but what time I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter, because the entire incident concluded here in this lounge. Everything happened in this lounge. Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBlanc? Do you have any better idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place in the scenario you presented. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than this lounge? These footprints, in which direction do you think these are headed? That will be the in-flight shop. Correct. They are headed in the direction of the shop. But they look disconnected. They end all of a sudden. You are right to point out that they do not form one continuous trail to the shop. However, there is another piece of evidence that connects the shop to our crime scene. Besides the footprints, what else points to the in-flight shop? Oh, that's the... Piggy bank. The murder weapon. This little piggy bank is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and only there, and it's not displayed here in this lounge. How then did it find its way here? Don't you find that a tiny bit suspicious? Hmm. Such a trivial point. It only means you prepared it, taking it from the shop first before coming here. It doesn't prove you're innocent at all. Hmm. Is there no way to win with this man? If I may. What is it? Um, you see, well, it's just as Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh? And why do you know this so well? Well, it's just that that piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And when was this? It was maybe around 5.40 a.m. Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? That's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um, yes, I was. Come to think of it. Mr. Tenero, when I found the body... I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. And what is beyond that door? That's the flight attendant's room. Uh, then, you were on the first floor? Yes. I had to do something at the shop and it... And in the flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first, and then to the flight attendant's room. Are you saying you passed by me at some point? Yes, you seemed really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. Hmm, I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice of who it was. Anyway, the piggy bank was definitely there at the shop when I went in there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Work, you say? God. LeBlanc is just such a Karen, honestly. The movie is late. But sir, it says here, the movie is late. I want my money back. Yes, the upkeep of the shop is also one of my responsibilities. You would like to speak to your manager. You bust into the cockpit. The movie is late! Why did you not say anything about that until now? Is what I want to know. In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there then? What is it now? 
Aren't you forgetting something, Mr. Rhoda? Miss Rhoda, I mean. Don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I have already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're alright. Huh? That's weird. What is? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Negro? It means he's lying. Go on, admit that you are. You said you had permission to search all over, but you don't. And yet, here you are. You flight attendant, what are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us? The captain is calling for you, Miss Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Mr. Nero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Miss LeBlanc. Mr. LeBlanc. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth. If you would follow me, I will be your guide from now on. There's something about Miss Nero that has piqued my curiosity. Right now, investigating the in-flight shop is my top priority. Yeehaw! Let's fucking run! <laughs> God, I love how you can run in this game. It's great. <laughs> so this is the in-flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? Guess I'll have to clean things up then. <laughs> Hold on, you can't clean up a potential crime scene. Oh, thank God. Goodness, I hate cleaning so much. I mustn't rush things here. I must remain cool, calm, and collected. Because this piggy bank was left at the crime scene. And there is a very good chance that the killer had paid this place a visit. Yes, let's go. The glass from this display case's door is shattered all over the floor. And it looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Hmm, wait, actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat. It's a wide selection of souven souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs in this trip. Okay, then how about you buy something for me then, as a present? I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy you anything. But I've had my eye on that pendant for such a long time. Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something, and then we'll talk. Stuffed toys, just like the one Miss Meal is holding, are on display here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one too. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuffed animal abuse when she says that? Inside this display case is a row of lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. But some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? Care to buy one? I sense that this shop is one shopper away from being sued. Beautiful flowers in a beautiful arrangement. I feel cleansed just by looking at them. Mr. Edgeworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh, excuse me. What are these? Oh, those are a company's completely original line of suitcases. They're practically flying out the door. That's how popular they are. You should buy one and see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work on this flight. But in the real world, you try, then buy. No way! But either way, it doesn't really matter. True. Either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase after they've boarded the plane? Anyway, see that? Just look at all the Mr. I fly heads painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? I believe he is uh, a tanuki. Right? It looks more like a tanuki than anything else. Yeah, he's a tanuki. 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 tanuki e, e, e. Wee. They're painted on with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? It is certainly making something jump inside jump inside my stomach. 
Huh? Oh, I guess there's no fooling your refined tastes. You looked like you really wanted to get one. And I thought I was going to find them in my first sale, but you saw right through it. Glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? But I never showed any interest in it to begin with. Mm -hmm. It really is pretty horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? The suitcase was designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss Tenero designed this. Yes, it was a company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. Uh, sharp? Like stinky sharp shutter, maybe. I really have no idea why the bigwigs decided to go with it. It's so... Bleh. Mr. Nero designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! You okay? I I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Meal. Wanting a suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. Here, I'll put it back. This one's sharp to sign. I can't check them out. Suitcases? No, I guess not. Can I talk to you? I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. So, what do you think about what has happened regarding this case? I don't know. I guess I think you're the killer, though, Mr. Edgeworth. I can assure you that I'm here in the shop to prove the just the opposite. Yeah, I think I think she she may be high. <laughs> Did she just die? I sure fucking hope so. Yeah, but it was me that got you the permission to look around. You know? So don't forget that, okay? How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Well, you know I really show your thanks? You see that item for sale over there? Sorry, but you're going to have to make do with my words of appreciation. Hmm. She is high. Hmm. The hat probably used to be on the piggy bag's head. Let's give it a go and see. I believe this piggy bag was forcibly removed from this display case. High up. <laughs> Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Eh, really? Don't tell me you don't know what things go where in the shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So, come on. How should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. The glass in this door is broken. Perhaps it was the killer who broke it in. Broke it in order to take the piggyback. But it's a bit odd that the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus the glass broke rather cleanly. Huh? What is it? I I touched the glass and I cut my finger. It hurts, Mr. Edgeworth. It hurts. Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. He's like, fuck. Fuck out of here. There is definitely something very unusual about this. About what? The killer had broken the glass to get at the get at the Mr. Ifly bank. There should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess it'd be like that. However, there is not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope. No, there isn't. Which means that the glass was broken from the inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over from the turbulence and right through the glass. You're right. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hat was knocked off its head at the time too. Yeah, that's nice. Which leads me to believe 
The killer took the Mr. Eye Life here, from here, after the turbulence. Interesting. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Meal, and listen when I'm talking. But the murder occurred before the turbulence, which rules this piggy bank out, that's out as the murder weapon. So you mean the bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake? Yes, at this point, that is a very real, real possibility. Um, but then what if when the killer went to take Mr. Ifly? They broke the glass by accident. And the display case is locked, so that's highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person who could have. Oh, and who would that be? Miss Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has the keys to everything. Miss Rhoda to Nero, huh? Do, 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 do. Oh, ow. Mm -mm. Yes, there is definitely something wrong here. What's with the sudden yelling? Oh, he was yelling? Tell me, Miss Meal, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? Oh, well, sure, they totally use strange, like the color and such. That's not what I'm talking about. Now pay attention. Oh, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth. S sorry. <clears throat> these suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't they? But I guess they take after their creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Meal. Don't you find it unusual that these cases are the only things undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, I'd sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. Upon closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. <laughs> I wonder how Miss Rhoda would have re reacted if she'd heard what you just said. It was wrong! She makes a good point. It will be wise of me to ma watch what I say out loud. What's this? I spotted something that's not quite right. So unusual about the suitcase. No, it doesn't have... The stoppers. There's something very peculiar about these wheels. Huh? As in... As in... There are no stoppers in place on these. Without the stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And? <sighs> and so it is very likely that this suitcase was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? It would appear to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And it's soaked with blood. Blood! It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to our murder after all. So explain this to me. Like, what does this suitcase have to do with the murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer used the suitcase in some manner. Such as to move something, perhaps. Eh, but aren't you just talking about the cloth then? That alone is too small. A larger item would be needed to move that would move what I'm thinking of. The thing I believe the killer used the suitcase or transport is. Mm. Yeah, okay, is this? Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? I just wasn't sure if it was that or if it was like the actual like person. But, but, in light of this, I'd say that Mr. Hicks was moved into the elevator from someplace else, which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after moving the body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase in here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing, just that. I was thinking about what Miss Rhoda said about coming here for something. 
Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. I'm very sorry, Miss Ridgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments, however, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the pres preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way I that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sounds like fun. We can camp out and watch over everything together. I found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge. And I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Meal reminded me about Miss Tenero. I can't allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. Hell yeah. Hey! Hmm. Seems to be some familiar face. <laughs> or, well, not face. Edgy really went from everyone's a criminal to we must find the truth. He really did, huh? And he's like, I'm starting to think like him. Who is him? <laughs> I know that once we had landed, I'm supposed to let the local police take over. And thanks to Miss Tenero and Miss Meal, I was able to preserve the crime scene. But I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with Mr. Neyra in private. So I'm left wondering just what she, what was she up to? And why did she do what she did? There must be a way for me to continue my investigation. I've been expecting you, Miles Edgeworth. Yo! Francisca, I thought you were still in Germany. I go where I am needed. And wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Francisca von Karma. The daughter of my mentor, Manfred von Karma. She, like myself, is a prosecutor. Are you heading up to this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I am placing you under arrest. What? It's quite frustrating, actually. I had hoped to exact my revenge on you in a different venue. But I'll have to take what I can get. I never thought I'd see the day. When a disciple of the house of Honkama would become a criminal. Have you no shame? Wait, it has all been a big misunderstanding. I didn't kill the victim. A misunderstanding. I heard all about the murder over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor and then beat him to death. Francisca, do you honestly believe that I killed the man? <laughs> I suppose I should reserve judgment until after I have investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. That's as it should be. Ha! I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from you of all people. To be perfect in every way, the fulfillment of what creed alone is all I strive for. Of that creed alone. Well, I have my own creed, which I must fulfill. So why don't we solve this together? I have to get going. The crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. Trust me, I had no intention to. Detective Gumshoe! Yes, sir! Too slow! How? Listen up. I am leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess up, understand? M Mr. Ridgeworth, I'm supposed to guard him? A simple yes or no, Detective. He's like two meters tall. Ah! Yes, sir! Understood, sir! You just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth. If you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. Are we clear? Now then, if you'll excuse me. Good to see you again, Miss Redgeworth, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. Thank you, detective. I believe in you, sir. You can lean on me. I'll get you th through this. I have to admit, I'm a bit curious as to what Francisca is up to. Maybe I should ask the good detective. 
Okay, well, in that case, I have a few questions for you. Okay, sure, but let me just talk to this man. Hmm, looking from behind. I think I've seen this man somewhere before. Nom nom nom. No! It's the producer. From the samurai case. <laughs> Soviet Russian world flag flags lunchboxes eat you. Oh my god. F? Do man just say F? Oh, okay, found it. LOL. <laughs> Feel a wave of creative powers coming on. It's over 9,000 lulls. From my sleep movie. It's gonna be the steel samurai warrior of Neo Tokyo versus the old samurai champion of Earth. It's gonna rock so so many boxers. What the hell are you talking about, my dude? Sal. Sal, please. So the steel samurai is finally getting a movie. Review of the planes preparing for takeoff. Besides the turbulence, they're really not all that bad as a mode of transpor transportation. Okay, anyways, uh, Gumshoe, let me just fucking morph into you for a second. <laughs> so, how is the initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the coroner's office. And we're taking statements now, sir. It sounds like Francisca. She was always good at quick responses to a case. I'd say she was, uh, a little too quick, sir. Oh? How so? Uh, um... I rushed on over as soon as I got word of the affair, sir. But somehow, when I got here, Ms. Von Karma was already here, barking out orders at everyone. It was kind of creepy, as though she knew there had been a murder or something. And had come in advance to await your flight's arrival. That is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the blue. Plus, I still don't know why she's here in America. America. Lamau. <laughs> Thank you, Nightbot. <laughs> there must be some backstory to all of this. Von Karma just kind of popped up at the prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Something about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details? It's kind of top secret, so she can't talk about it even with me, sir. Knowing her, the only type of talking she likes to do is with her whip. Plus, I doubt the top secret part was what stopped her from talking to you, detective. Although, I wonder if her case has anything to do with mine. Anyway, that's about all the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we in investigate. Yes, it is high time to resume my investigation. Starting with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. So you must be the captain. Why, yes, I am. And who might you be? I am the prodigy prosecutor, Francisca von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Uh, don't you dare, Captain, getting friendly with another woman. I'll never forgive you if you do. W what are you talking about? I only have eyes for you, my dear Cammy. I wouldn't put money on our dear Captain to be much of a reputable person. Sure you don't want to ask the Captain some questions, sir? He was in the cockpit the entire time, and I highly doubt he would know anything of use. Anyway, I'd like to leave that type of witness to Francisca and her whip. It's like, meh. <laughs> God, he's still there. Go take your fucking Karen ass and just fucking go somewhere else, dude. I see here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. How long do you intend to hold me? Oh, never mind. He is being held. 
For what reason, I'm not sure, but sure. It is impossible for me to be the criminal, I told you. Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, it's you. Tell this man to stop stopping me from going. Time is money. I don't have even one second of wasteful time to spend. Sir, you can't go in there. I'm Miles Edgeworth. I am one of the prosecutors on this case, so please let me through. I'm very sorry, sir. No one is allowed to enter without Miss Von Karma's express permission. But I'm on the case. <laughs> like, I'm on the case. Like, let me through. <laughs> yes, I understand that, but I also have explicit instructions not to let you through from Miss Von Karma. Would you do this to me, Francisca? He sounded so pouty, he did. Did you finish taking his statements yet? Yep, all done, sir. I do not concern. If you're not done examining the cargo hold, I want my cargo back. If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay. Art? What sort of art? Mr. LeBlanc's an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down in the cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. From folk costumes to stone statues. I sell all kinds of arts. Fall costumes. Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat. It kind of looks like that other piece of cloth. I suppose I'm supposed to show this to him then. Yeah. Mr. LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Hmm? Oh, it's a Virginia cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose. Yes, of course. This fabric is so famous. Or just come from over the seas for more. Then this is the cargo you were talking about earlier. No, no, no. My cargo this time is much, much more gigantic. You, detective, when can I have my cargo moved? You can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. The stubbornness of you, police. It is no good. And it is no good that attendant refuses to exit the attendant's room, too. That attendant? I wonder if he's talking about Mr. Nero. What did you mean by that attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken into the attendance room for her interview. And then they still have not come out. They make no sign of coming out either. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, quicker than her. Why is Mr. Nero's interview the one, only one that's taking up so much time? Miles Edgeworth, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain the co cooperation of the flight attendants. Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Mr. Nero. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendant's room. Hm. Before I do, you still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious conclusion. The scene of the crime was here. In the very lounge, the body was discovered. <laughs> From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found, the only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This unmistakably makes you the likeliest suspect. Isn't it most likely? The likeliest suspects, Francisca? Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Or is my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Wait, how old is she in this? She's still 19, so it's pretty fairly, like, recent after... After the last game in the trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, but your leniency is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic fast. It would appear that you did not have all the information you needed after all. And what does that mean? 
I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves that the body, body was moved from a different location. The killer used this suitcase to move the victim's body. Meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge at all. Now who's the one rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you would come to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. You should know better than that. A phone comma is perfect in every way. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? As if there is proof of that. Where is the proof that the suitcase was moved around? Ah, of course. If you look here, there are wheel marks. I don't have them. I was thinking of the same thing too, but you can see the wheel marks. And the grape juice. Or from the grape juice. Spilled grape juice in front of the elevator. Yes, and I'd like to draw your attention to this area here. Where is the evidence that proves the killer dragged the suitcase to where? Well, obviously. This mark here. Wouldn't you say that it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there is also grape juice residue on the wheels of, on the, of the suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Not so fast! This still doesn't put you in the clear, not by a long shot. You prepared yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit that turbulence. And then you waited for the victim in the lounge, where you beat him to death. Then while you were in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed into the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from. And pretended to be the discoverer of the body. Not a bad bit of logic for something you thought up on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? But I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in her logic in one fell swoop. Objection! The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal prowess is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essential tools that those who would stand in the courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. Ifly piggy bank is just such a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? The timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is important. And it was taken after the turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder, when the killer fabricated the, this weapon. Looking at, looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After ex exiting the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick the bank up from the floor. took it to fabricate a fake murder by murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my pers person 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 personage per personage in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for the murder of Mr. Akbay Hicks. 
God, I fucking love that fucking post. It's it's fucking amazing. I believe his fucking eyes are open too. Like I can't see that they're closed. <laughs> it's funny because in the second two there is like this like scene of him like waking up after being passed out or something. And he, it actually looks like way better. I was like, oh my god, look at this. <laughs> you there. Yes, ma'am. Other than this piggy bank, was anything else resembling a murder weapon found? We didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could have been used were broken during the turbulence. And the remaining items all tested negative for any trace of blood. His legs look so short. <laughs> You're right. I see. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it appears your stall tactics are at an end. But it's possible that it's just hidden somewhere, sir. If the criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place, I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside that suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means that the real murder weapon is either still on the murderer's pers personage, or is still at the real crime scene. There is one more possibility, and that will be that the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just... Let me finish. The killer took the bank out from the display case before the turbulence by opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time that the glass pane in the door was broken. I'd say that's perfectly reason that's a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see. So that means that the killer had the key to the display case. Francisco, the person you're talking about. Not so fast. I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain and granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it was a sin of lying. Speaking of which, I recall that you also wished to speak with her. Yes. Very well, permission granted. But only if you can sit in on... I can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her. But you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. Miss Tenero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. So you're the one that poked around inside this plane without the captain's permission. Deviating from the flight attendant's, flight attendant's manual is very unbecoming, you know. What were you hoping to accomplish by doing that? I... I... Mr. Nero. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, you're here too? Can you please help us and shed some light on why you did what you did? All right. Why did you lie about receiving the captain's permission like that? Because it did, I didn't think I would be able to get his permission. What do you mean? The captain. He only has ears for Cammy. I spoke with the captain a little earlier myself. He definitely seems to be rather taken with Miss Meal. Yes, and on top of that, I had mistakenly accused Mr. Edgeworth of being the killer. I wanted to make amends. In that case, please allow me to thank you for what you did. Thanks to you, I was able to clear myself of all charges. Really? You were able to prove your innocence? Thank goodness. Miss Tenero, was it? Here is... There is one more thing I would like to ask you. You were in the in-flight shop just before the turbulence, weren't you? Please answer honestly. Yes, I was. And why were you there? Well, I... Hmm, I have a sudden hesitation. Francisca seems to have struck a nerve. All I did was go check up on the shop like I always do. You're saying it was for work then? Yes, I'm in charge of the shop, so I have to keep an eye on it. I don't have any reason to go there otherwise. After your visit to the shop, you paid a visit to this room, correct? But I came back to freshen up and adjust my makeup. I'm sorry, but there isn't much else to tell. Hmm, Mr. Nero claims to have no reason other than duty to go to the shop. But is that all there is to it? 
Maybe I should ask her about that thing. The suitcase. If you could please take a look at this for me, Miss Tenero. Well, that suitcase. Yes, about the suitcase. You are the one who designed it, correct? And I think I figured something else about out about it. The suitcase is the reason you went to the shop, isn't it? There's nothing you won't find out eventually, is there? Would you please tell me more about this suitcase? Yes, um, I... well, I... I was interested in seeing how the suitcase I had designed were selling. I... I know that as a service professional I'm not supposed to care. But I really wanted to know. I was glad to see that it was the last one there. The last one there? Interesting. Though you're saying, Mr. Nero, that the suitcase in question was the last one. Yes, they're just so popular, they're practically flying off the shelves. That's not exactly the impression I got. The one in the shop is most definitely the last one. Well, we're currently looking at that suitcase. Really? Then I guess we sold all of them. Thank you very much for taking the last one. I didn't say anything about buying it. Then say you'll buy it. I I'm sorry, I can't. But, but, but why? I think it'll go great with your complexion, Miss Rashford. That really suits you. Imagine. I guarantee it personally as a service professional. Um, well, that is... How should I put this? It's hideous. <laughs> oh, what? Hmm. Maybe that was a bit too direct. You think? Moving on, my issue with the suitcases isn't the design, it's the number of them remaining. R remaining There were two suitcases in the in-flight shop when I investigated it. Two? But that's impossible. I'm sure there was only one. Looks like her story was generated has generated quite the contradiction. When I left the shop, I'm positive there was only one suitcase left. Something is amiss here. What could be the meaning of this inconsistency? Hmm? By the way, Miss Tenero. What is one of those suitcases doing here? Um, that's... I thought you said there was only one left. That one is, um... It's mine. I've used it for a very long time now. She's used it for a long time. I think not. Miss Tenero, I'd appreciate it, if you, appreciate it if you didn't lie to me. Excuse me? I don't believe for even one second that you've used this for a very long time. I mean, the price tag is still on it. What proves this hasn't been used for nearly as long as Miss Tenero says? Mm. Price tag. Tell me, Miss Tenero, is it also your habit to keep the price tag pristine on your suitcase? What is the meaning of this? Why would you lie about the suitcase? Despite having faith in her design sense, the sales numbers made her cry bitter tears. The truth is becoming increasingly clear to me. Mr. Nero, I think I understand. I know what you are trying to hide. Now then, this suitcase was originally in... Seeing as how... In the, in the in-flight shop, of course. Seeing as how the price tag is still in this suitcase, one can only assume it was out on the floor for sale in the shop. Shop. And the person who bought the suitcase was... You. It was you, wasn't it, Mr. Nero? I hate to say this, but the suitcase that you designed... It hasn't sold very well, has it? You saw how poorly this design... That you poured your heart into was selling. And were deep, deeply hurt. That's why you wanted to make it look like it was selling by buying it yourself. Isn't that right? Then, the reason you went to the shop and came back here was... I'm sorry. All I really have is my job. I, I was overjoyed when my design was chosen. I thought that maybe... Maybe I had finally accomplished something. But the suitcases didn't sell. It's because of the design, isn't it? All because it's as you put it. Hideous can't say they chose a great place in which to sell them either. 
They weren't selling a single one, and they were just sitting there, collecting dust. I felt so bad seeing them there day in and day out. So I decided to buy one for every flight I worked. You buy one every single time you work a flight. I see. So in order to keep your resolution, you went and bought one today as well. Yes, and here is my receipt for that purchase. Hmm. And this receipt is clearly timestamped 5.40 a.m. The truth is, there's still a bunch of them left unsold. They're planning to scrap the remaining ones at the end of this flight. Mr. Nero, where are those others? Where are these other suitcases? They should all be down in the cargo hold. Then the suitcase the killer used could very well have come from the cargo hold. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, you don't think that the killer used one of my suitcases to... Yes, I do. The killer used one of your beloved suitcases to move the victim's body. <gasps> oh, could they? Those suitcases were meant to be faithful partners to our passengers on their trips. That's all I ever wished for them to be. Mr. Nero, is there any other way to get to the cargo hold other than the elevator? The only other way is just through that door there. There. Yeah, it's, a uh, Kind of tacky. Have you really seen worse, though? Have you really? Oh, yeah, look here. There's the grape juice on the wheels. I didn't even notice that. It's this wheel is completely covered in something. This color and the scent it appears the substance is in question is grape juice. Why would there be grape juice on the wheel of a suitcase? Like, not to throw any shade on Miss Rhoda, but I could design a way better one. You know, the way is just through that door there. And what about security? The door has no special lock installed because just to enter this room, you need a special key card that only crew members have access to. Which means that the culprit is someone who can enter this room. Eliminating the passengers and leaving only crew members as potential suspects. I, I can't believe it. Yes, Francisca. Going on these wild goose chases, you're a disgrace to the Fun common name. And what do you mean by that? The suitcase came from the cargo hold. That fact alone tells the whole story. Yes, which is why I said the culprit must have must be a crew member who used their keycard. Miles Edgeworth. You're proposing that the killer rode the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, that's the only realistic possibility. That other attendant, Miss Meal. I asked her earlier and she had this to say. Francisca got information out of Miss Meal? In order to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold, a different keycard is required. A different one. Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Rhoda Tenero. And only you. What? Is this true, Mr. Nero? Y yes, I keep that keycard in my locker at all times. Could you please show us that card right now? Y yes, hold on. Ah, I, I don't believe it. What's wrong? The keycard, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Very clever. Pretending that your card was stolen when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You've really thought this through. Wait, it's not like that. You can tell us all about what it's like down at the station office. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. It looks like Gumption doesn't have a face right now. M Mr. Edgeworth. What's wrong? There's disbelief written all over your face. Francisca, I know that you are the lead investigator on this case. However, hold it. Don't even think about wasting any more of my time. You know the rules as well as I do. You know the rules and so do I. <laughs> Evidence speaks louder than words. Even if this isn't the courtroom, that basic tenet still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. 
Cool, we're halfway through. Wait. Huh. Wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? It's so big. This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and ultra luxurious first class seating. So this is the real scene of the murder. There's certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. Holy suitcases, Mr. Edgeworth. It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase fair. These must be all the leftover ones and they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really cool, don't you think? Practically screams artsy. Oh, well, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. You think so? Then maybe I will. Let's see here. Twelve hundred dollars? I think I'll pass. Well, it was fifty percent though. Mr. Nero wonders why they don't sell. You'd need two jobs just to buy one. Hmm, definitely looks like one is missing. What's this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of aspects. Hey, what's with the suitcase, pal? It's what the victim checked in, sir. Poor suitcase. It's the signer. Like, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> that is a real crime. So this suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we took a closer look. There's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, a file. And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it, sir. It looks like a profile on Francisco. Weird. <laughs> Why would Mr. Hicks have read a file on her? Oh no, actually I gotta... No, that scream stalker. Okay, let me talk to Francisca. You were right at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yes, I was. I've been following a very large and involved government level international crime. But it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Interpol is involved. It's a top secret operation, so I really can't tell you any more than I already have. Hmm. I mean, broken glasses, glass shards. Though, to be fair, those glass shards look a bit bigger, but... I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses lenses. Ergo, the victim was here just as I suspected. So you're saying that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying the for a while now? Or was it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is left is to find the murder weapon. Whee. Now why would Mr. Hicks have documents profiling Francisca? Oh I know, I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir. Francisca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, well, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was in, in actuality Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francisca has some explaining to do. Hmm. 
You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks, isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol Agent then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. He went undercover to un investigate this crime. And it was I who put him in on this put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on, the on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. I think we now have pretty definitive evidence. That Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. Well, what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. Well, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. Ow! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. As I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation that he was observing. Francisca, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue this inv his, his investigation? No, unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after we after he landed. I see, but this raises another question. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and they entered the elevator. But while they were riding it up... The plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this time- at this stage. What? Really, sir? I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tenero. If it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is the keycard that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rodo Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. But she... But it's highly likely that the keycard was stolen from Mr. Nero. It's highly likely. Is that possibility the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father. <laughs> yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet. You're a disgrace. And there's more evidence pointing to Miss Rodent's Nero, you know. It's not just the keycard that gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon, the Mr. Ifly piggy bank? Yes. She is also the only person with a key to open that display case. Further, there is the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. But that is a fix. Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? I mean, the body. Francisca, I think you were too quick to, 
quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I say, how can I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks' head is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Y yes, sir! Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of A Agent Hicks' autopsy. Yes, sir! We got a big problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. What is it, Detective? You're still doing the autopsy, but they said that they already know this one thing for sure. Report, now. The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. From the victim's shoulder to his mid-back. He was beaten over such a wide area. Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. It wasn't just his head. The killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? Oh no. That's not good. I mean, my, my phone seems to be doing fine, so I, it must be on your end. I, well, at some... Was a wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon detective? Oh, well, they said that they were still looking into that, sir. Hmm, I see. You're completely useless. Yeah! Sir, I told you already, you can't go down there. No, you remove yourself my, from my way. What is all that racket? My luggage! My cargo! They're mine, and I demand you return them to me! We're still investigating the cargo hold. Please understand, and you and have a little patience. Oh no. That sucks. I suppose there's no choice. Finally, I think he gave- Hey, what are you? You have left me with no choice but to use strong force. Arr! You won't get past me. This is... That's it! So that's how this whole thing has been about. What this whole thing has been about. Further, there is the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo... Cargo hold and came up empty-handed. Doc said that, it, that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. But I have to connect them, so... Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over. Which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct c conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark. Which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggy bank, piggy bank is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. If you're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far we haven't found anything that re resembles a weapon of any sort. 
Perhaps, just perhaps it's something we've all overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally, it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. What was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Francisca! What? What do you want? I found it, Francisca. I found the real murder weapon. Y you did? He, he really jumped. We didn't realize it until now, but the answer has been right in front of us the whole time. He might be hurt. We should go check up on him, sirs. That's a pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. It's coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyway, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back yourself up with ev up with evidence. You two aren't listening at all, are you? Come on then, show me this real murder weapon you speak of. Uh... I have no evidence. Hm. I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool from a foolishly foolish fool meant, meant to fool me. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as... That which caused Agent Hicks' death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I have forgived, figured out what was the real cause of death. Freefall. The victim fell from a great height and subs sub subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. <laughs> fell to his death? Yes, this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and his back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. B but the murder... murder happened inside this plane. I know. And suffocation tends to leave, give a very long bruise, and yes. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane where, from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. You... You can't mean... Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then... then we're in trouble. We may have a second death on our hands, sirs. Hey, you! Tell me you aren't dead, pal! Quiet! Why are you screaming? He's alive! And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. Suppose it's true that it's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? It would have been a Virginian pancake for sure, sir. I suppose that man over there wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is that the cargo box is there. So there is no point in entertaining your wild hypothetical scenarios. Maybe there now. But there is no proof that it was always there. Ha! Huh. As if there is... As if there could have been a window of time when that giant box was not there. Oh, but there was. What? What can I use to show her that it's possible the box was not always where it is now? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not even looking at that. It's a refueling in Shengfa. You refueled in, in the Republic of Shengfa? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Shengfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What if the box in question was only transferred onto, onto the plane at that time? To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah, huh, it's labeled Shengfa Express. Correct, meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Shengfa. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Shengfa leg of the flight, making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Then allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. My first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail.
Yeehaw. Let's fucking go. Hmm, and this is a rather large piece of cargo. You should attack on it, sir. Let's see. Aleph Red statue? Never heard of it. Nor I, but I but all I care about is if we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Let's get investigating, sir. Look here! Do not go about touching my possessions without my permission! Ah, don't brush up on me like that, pal! So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. But I have to talk to him again? I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine! I shipped it! I shipped this fine piece of art from Europe! This Aleph Red statue is worth 10 million cents. No, maybe much, much more. Hmm. Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the large cargo hold. 10 million cents. I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of noodles I've made! <laughs> Edgeworth, please! Darn, how did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun. I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Miss Regworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? D does it really make a difference to our case? Mr. LeBlanc, there is a Kate. There is a change. Chance! That your cargo is related to our murder case. I was wondering if you could allow us to examine it a bit closer. It is a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be no touching. We love a smuggler. If Mr. LeBlanc has something to do with the smuggling ring, then it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zheng Fa. I think I need to question him a bit further. About your statue, Mr. LeBlanc. I wonder if I if it might be a fake. What? How dare you say my art is fake! I suspect that your statue might be the target of an international smuggling ring. Don't say such fantastical things! Those thieves would not dare! I have the certification of my cargo right here! Do you mean the cargo certification document? Mrs. Saint Leblanc, why didn't you say so earlier? Please show it to us at once! I can't read this! What does it say? It says as plain as day, the cargo was put onto the plane in Europe! And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. Too bad for you. The statue was brought on board in Europe. Just as it states in the certificate. Certificate. No, that's... Which means that there never was a window of time in which the statue wasn't sitting there. I respectfully disagree. We can't discount the theory until I see the statue for myself. Hmm. Then you can have your wish. Look at it yourself and see I'm right. This. No, I've seen this somewhere before. Is this the Aleph Red? It gives us such a feeling of art, I can practically smell it. This statue has a high amount of historic value. After it was unveiled at a museum in Europe, I brought it to this country to exhibit it. I believe a closer look is warranted here. So this is the infamous Aleph Red statue, huh? Hmm? What is it, Mr. Ashworth? Did you find something? There's something wrong with this picture. We should examine it in more detail. Hmm, something just doesn't seem right, does it? Also, by the way, how is the layout now that I've actually played it for a while? Like, is it fine? I would make the, the 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 screens bigger, but it would like look really strange. 
Like one would have to be massive and one would have to be really small. And as you can see, there are things like happening on both screens. So I feel like this is like the best way to go about it. Mm-hmm. I guess I could make them like bigger if I like place them right next to each other, but then like where would I put everything else? <laughs> you know? These eyes are awfully orange, don't you think? Yeah, I'm pretty. They remind me of sunsets when I was in grade school, sir. I don't think you see what I'm talking about. No, I do, but it's really like this the color of the sun when it's setting, sir. Oh, the memories. I remember standing out in that field, spinning with my arms out until I felt ill. I don't care about sunsets. Focus, detective. What color are the eyes in this photo? Uh-huh. Ah, sir, the red! As I thought, this statue is a fake. Mr. LeBlanc. What do you want? Do you not know I am a busy man? I allow you two seconds for your answer. The other Fred, I suppose this is your pride and joy, is it not? It is the biggest trophy on this European trip! Do you know why I wanted to possess a statue? The trigger started 17 years ago! Better grab a chair, sir. Sounds like this is gonna be a long story. Mr. LeBlanc, I regret to inform you. And you have my heartfelt sympathy, but... What is that? Sympathy? For what? You see, I'd like you to compare the eyes. That large fellow there has very bright and fair and pretty eyes compared to you. I wasn't talking about the two of us. I meant the eyes of the statue in front of us, and the one in this photo. Why the sudden yelling? Now then... Oh! It is a photo of the statue in, on display at, at the museum in Europe. Mm, what? Now do you see, Mr. LeBlanc? The statue before us is a fake. A, a fake? I believe that even further examination will be required. Now that we have confirmed that this is indeed a fake, there must be some sort of proof that this was brought on board in Xingfa. And I will present to you evidence that will resolve the remaining contradiction. What is this? The statue looks like it's stepping all over it, its neighbor's cloth, cloth cover. Kind of resembles the its owner's attitude in a sense. Ho ho. You, what did you say now? Further, my clothing's hem is not being stepped on by anyone. It is too expensive for me to allow that to happen. Please forgive the trespasses of my subordinates. Why should I forgive it? Sh forgive if the dress passes. God. <laughs> Unless it is an expensive dress, you keep it. There is clearly a contradiction here. What are you going on about? It's just a simple case of a cargo cover getting stuck under another piece of cargo. When was the other case brought on board? Yes, exactly. Huh, that's not possible! But it is. It shouldn't be this way, but the statue is on top of the cloth. Supposing that the neighboring piece of cargo was brought on board in Shangfa. There is no way that any part of it could, should wind up under something from Europe. Which means that this fake statue was smuggled on board in Zhengfa. But then, what about the cargo certificates? Let me ask in return, what about Agent Hicks? Why did he come down here in the middle of the flight? There is only one reason why, to secure proof of smuggling activity aboard, aboard this flight. So you say, but I don't believe he had to do that mid-flight. We could have just as easily inspected all of the cargo after the plane landed. That may be true, however, you have it backwards, Francisca. Sure, Agent Hicks could have waited until after the plane had landed, but he had a reason for coming down to the cargo hold. Suppose he had found the fake, fake at the airport. It would have been after the swap had occurred. At that time, the suspicion would naturally fall onto the statue's owner. Who would have 
who would have no way to prove that the statue was switched without his knowledge. Which means there is someone involved who is forging or modifying cargo certificates. I guess the victim knew the real version of this was gonna be get, get nabbed, huh? Yes, while this photo would be seen as nothing more than a simple souvenir, it was in fact taken to be used as a reference document later on. Next, Agent Hicks had to secure proof that the smuggling had taken place. It came down here to take a picture of the cargo hold. A rather empty one at that, right before the fake statue could be loaded on board. A photo of the hold missing a valuable piece of cargo would have been proof enough. After that, all he had to do was hold the Sheng Fa cargo crew and arrest the smuggler. Exactly. This only goes to prove my theory. If the statue was not in the cargo hold during the Europe, Sheng F Europe to Sheng Fa leg of the trip, there would have been enough height from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death. Officer, move the statue immediately. I want a thorough examination of the floor underneath now. Spong Karma, I'm ready to report my findings. Go on. After moving the Aleph Red statue out of the way, we tested the area under, under it with Luminal and there was a reaction. I see. There was a reaction to Luminal. It, an indication that there was blood in, in that spot. Mm -hmm. Can we stop looking at it now, sirs? It would seem that my deductions were correct after all. I suppose it would appear that way. The culprit cleaned the blood up well. And how do you think the killer did that? How did the killer clean up... How did the killer clean up all the blood? Mm. The killer used the bloody cloth I found inside the suitcase to clean up the mess. I see. They had a need to clean up all the blood before the plane landed in Shengfa. Yes, because otherwise the cargo crew would have discovered it during the layover. So you guys are saying that the murder... Murder happened before the plane landed in Zhengfa? There is no other conceivable timeline for the events of the murder. But if that is true, then that throws a certain person's testimony out into doubt. If the murder occurred before we landed in Zhengfa, then this becomes highly suspect. Well, uh, what do we got here? Miss Meals. Huh, he was in a seat. When we took off again at 5 a.m. Me thinks Miss Meal looks pretty suspicious. Recall Miss Meal's testimony about Agent Hicks in regard to when we when we departed Shengfa. I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. Miss Weed? It's kind of funny because, like, her name is, like, Chamomile, and while that is a tea, it's also like um, tea is made of leaves. You know, you know what? What is also made of of leaves? <laughs> Busted. We. <laughs> <laughs> she claims Agent Hicks was alive at the time of the service calls, but it totally contradicts the facts, sir. But why would she lie about something like that? I think the only person who can answer that is Miss Meal herself. Okay. Final chapter. And then we're like, but halfway through the game? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Miss Meal. Miss Meal. Huh? Do you recall what you said earlier? About when you answered some some service calls and as we were departing from Zheng Fa. Huh? You said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at that time. However, that is simply not possible. Because Mr. Hicks was dead long before we ever touched down in Zheng Fa. Oh? Miss Camille. Um, maybe I didn't see what I thought I did. 
No one could make a mistake so large, Miss Mew. Um, but I make that kind of boo-boo all the time. Mm -hmm. This is going nowhere. There must be a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well. Miss Mew, if you please, tell me all about your alibi during the time span. From just before we, we were to land it, at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, Mr. Edgeworth? Mm, oh, um, yeah. From 3 to 4, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. Mm, oh, um, yeah. And from 5 to 6, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. How is a man supposed to react to testimony like that? Miss Meal, wake up! Huh? <laughs> that alibi. <sighs> she fell asleep again. It looks like the only way I'm going to be able to wake her up is by pressing her. She must be the daughter of one Yanni Yogi, considering how they both just fall asleep mid-sentence. Mm -mm -mm. So you were alone the entire time, were you? Yeah, no one else even popped their head in to say hi. Oh? Well, I think a contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes, raise an objection. Miss Meal, there is a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. What? Huh? What are you talking about? It's not possible that you were alone in the attendance room the whole time from 5 to 6 a.m. Because of the words of receipt, there is the receipt. Suki's receipt. I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Meal. Huh? A receipt? For what? It's for the suitcase Mr. Nero bought. Now if I may direct your attention to the timestamp. As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m. Mr. Nero. Yes? Huh? Why is the killer here? I thought you'd have her locked up by now. I requested that she be present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Mr. Nero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip from first class down to the first floor in fl in-flight shop, correct? Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase. After which I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. And did you see Miss Meal there at the time? Um, no. So, Miss Meal, where were you really between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Mm hmm. Miss Cammy Meal! Huh? Uh, um, the bathroom? I'll be the one to ask the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Nature calls, you know. Do you take me for a fool? That's a little too convenient to be true. Um, but it's the truth! Cross my heart! I don't have enough conclusive proof to counter-argue her at this point, at this stage. You don't believe me, do you? But please, won't you give me a chance and hear me out? Look, I know you're suspecting me, because I'm one of the crew. But you think then maybe you should also suspect Miss Rhoda, too. She's the one in charge of the elevator keycard and the shop, you know. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. Please leave Miss Tanera out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. I don't get it. Why are you covering for Miss Rhoda all of a sudden? Oh, now I get it. Maybe you got your eye on Miss Rhoda. Of course I'm keeping, keeping an eye on her. I can't very well let her escape, can I? He just, like, does not understand. Like, that just fucking went right over his fucking head. Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of... I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate my sense of design. Now's not the time for this sort of talk. He's like, I don't really fucking care. <laughs> uh, 
and just focus on the case. Mm hmm What are you in charge? And what are you in charge of, Miss Meal? Um, I take care of the attendance room. That doesn't count. Oh, but I spend so much time in there. It might as well just be my responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Kami is very talented in languages, so she assists passengers who may not speak English, especially those who speak Virginian. She is the only one on this flight who is fluent. Oh, you mean that kind of? What am I in charge of? Why didn't you just say so in the first place? What else could I have meant? Yes, I'm really good at Virginian. She's fluent in Virginian. Then I suppose you're in charge of pro processing the documents in Virginian. Yeah, I take care of everything that has to do with Virginian. Hmm, very interesting. If you ask me... Oh, that makes her... All I'm in charge of are the attendance room and some Virginian stuff. Where is the certificate? So you're the only one in this flight crew that speaks Virginian. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I started abroad in Virginia for a while. If that is the case, then the signature on this document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of documentation with only one purpose. To lead anyone who read it to believe that Mr. LeBlanc's statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have either prepared or processed this document in Virginia is you, Miss Meal. Without your participation, the smuggling of the Aleph Red could not have occurred. Don't sleep while I'm pointing my finger at you! <laughs> I love that this is a real frame. Like, it's... It's beautiful. Truly beautiful. Don't sleep while I point my feet. That's amazing. I love that. Oh, I wouldn't dream of falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. It is exactly as you say. Are you confessing to having participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed off on that document. But you can't use that fact alone to make your allegation of smuggling stick. There is no direct correlation after all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really? All you did was sign it? I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. So, sorry about that. Hmm. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be one tough fight. Suppose, and this is just a supposition, even if I was involved in the smuggling, you can't throw the charge of murder on me just like that. If you were involved in the smuggling, you would have you would have a strong motive to kill. Agent Hicks was in the middle of, invest of an investigation regarding a smuggling ring. And just when he was about to close in, he is killed by a member of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is a smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things on this plane for work purposes. Hmm, so perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you, I meant the killer. First it was myself, and now it's Miss Tenero who is under the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin this crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is being set up. Or that she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed... That she was indeed the intended target from the very beginning. I believe that the plan was to push for all of the, all of the blame for the crime onto her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. This proves that the killer was out to frame Miss Tenero from the very beginning. A suitcase... The killer could have t hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose the suitcase. Why is that? 
Perhaps it was to move the body up from the lower deck to the first floor. However, why go through the trouble to do so? Wait, that like bubble blowing thing, it's like supposed, now it's like supposed to be a pipe. <clears throat> okay. Or something like that. The only way all of these actions make sense is if the killer had wanted to frame Miss Tenero from, for the murder. Miss Tenero buys a suitcase on every flight she works without fail. But should her suitcase be switched with the one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. Hmm. <laughs> There wasn't enough time to put the body back into the suitcase. Ergo, they made do with whoever was at hand. Adapted their... Adapted their plan and tried to frame me as, a, as I lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer then went to hide the suitcase in the in-flight shop and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a va false weapon. A lot of work for a fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? Not just because of the special circumstances surrounding this particular case. What special circumstances that dictated the need for the killer to frame someone? When the murder took place? Where the murder took place? The special circumstance is simply that the murder took place on the plane mid-flight. No matter which country customs, which country customs is quite strict in this day and age, so no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there was no choice but to frame either Mr. Nero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries of the criminal's movements is not Mr. Nero or myself, but you, Miss Cammy Meal. Only you and you alone could be the killer. Ah, <sighs> hand. Are you done already? I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence. Isn't that like how you hold a blunt? <laughs> like... I'm not- I'm, I'm just saying that we may not be too far off. <laughs> You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence. <laughs> I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive evidence. This is definitely supposed to be a blunt. And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. Oh, so snap. I don't have any actual evidence. Thought not. But that's because it went missing, and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle that is this case, there was one piece I kept getting stuck on. And that is the victim's cell phone. Francisca, you were waiting at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks' cell phone. Or at least that's what you told me. That's right. But Agent Hicks' cell phone could not be found at, at the crime scene. You mean the killer took the phone with them? Precisely. I suspect that if we were to find that phone, it would lead us to the killer. <laughs> Come on, get serious. If the victim fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know that until we try a little experiment, will we? Francisca, I'd like to ask you for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do. Agent Hicks' phone! It's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear it, Detective. Now, where is it coming from? Damn it, it doesn't go any higher or lower or anything. 
Sounds like the phone is up in the flight flight attendant's room. Oh, better hurry to the flight attendant's room, sir. The ringing is coming from somewhere in here, sir. No stone unturned, Detective Gumshoe. We must find it. Doesn't seem to be over here. Let's look somewhere else, sir. The ringing is coming from somewhere around here. But it's not here, sir. I know I have such a bad feeling about where we're going to find the phone. Doesn't seem to be over here. Let's look somewhere else, sir. The ringing is coming from in here, sir. What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Tenero's. What? He's just there now. So, Mr. Edgeworth, how did it go? Where did you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room. In Miss Tenero's locker. What? But... Rhoda Tenero. I, I don't know anything about the phone. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It's phone karma, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tenero right away. Wait, I have a theory. This is related to the incident with the keyboard. Keycard. <laughs> Why does think it's keyboard all the time? When the killer went to steal the keycard. They conveniently stashed their cell phone in Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. Objection! This is related to the keycard, alright? In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer ju did just that. I really love your keyboard. Listen, I, I guess I'm not the most awake at this point either. Mm -hmm. The only voice that sings the truth is evidence. And that is the one bird we cannot ignore. Ignore? Ignore. Kill me. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point. Alright then. Why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? He must have something very incriminating on, on or in it. What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. Took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Okay, let's fucking go. The LCD is broken. Without a screen, you can't even place a call with this. Ah, huh, it's a camera lens. Come to think of it. I wonder... How exactly was Agent Hicks planning to preserve the crime scene of smuggling? Francisca, I need you to confirm something. The cell phone. Can it take pictures? It's Redworth. I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. This looks like a very similar model to my own. And mine can take photos just fine. You think Agent Hicks could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures as evidence for his smuggling case. If so, I say there may be some very inconvenient photos in here for our killer smuggler. But the phone's all busted up, sir. Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. <laughs> Find a way, don't you worry about that. <sighs> may I go back to sleep now? The LCD screen on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data. What? What do you mean by that, Francisca? It looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. This phone still rang when I called it, meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. Accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. 
And Siska, your phone if you please. Very well. It's transferring. Alright, displaying it now. This is... Agent Hicks was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence for his smuggling case. Hey, the Alifred's nowhere in this picture. But this is no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? Oh, she's right. There's not much we can find out from this... ...about Agent Hicks' killer, sir. Is this it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? The fact that all of the suitcases are here in this photo is odd. Agent Hicks was still alive at the time. So what exactly is so odd about the suitcases that haven't been used used yet being here, being there? Yes, well, I was only pointing out things that are different between now and then. Your off-topic ramblings have put this attendant to sleep yet again, my Fledgeworth. Hmm. <sighs> I give sleepy her Sleepyhead here a rude awakening, a deafening objection, and a contradiction. Boxes of bed sheets. These are still in the cargo hold. There's nothing unusual about them in particular, but I can't shake the feeling. Oh, if you're just playing around, can't mind if I go home? Yes, I mind. I need to focus on what's different now from back then. I mean, these crates, right? What's all this? Hmm? Oh, they're a cargo ship from Virginia to Shangfa. So the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Shangfa. Mr. Leblanc, can you tell me the contents of the boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English written on them anywhere. Hmm, one cluster of boxes is written in Borginian. It says... It is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer... What? What for is that scary face? Miss Meal. Yes? It appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us with a piece of evidence after all. A striking piece that will point out who this who his killer is. Ha! Maybe I shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. Virginian cargo and this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. Yes. Yeah, and what is that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe off the blood they had spilt. But there was one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? And now I finally, I have finally found my answer in this very photo. The cargo that was unloaded in Shangfa had cloth written on it. In Borginian, that is. And this is where the killer grabbed a piece from, piece from to clean up the blood with. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Cammy Meal. Huh, that's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Virginian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. And if the killer supposedly could not comprehend Virginian, well then. Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. Take that. Hey, it says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir. Precisely. And bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So, what are you trying to say? That if I were the criminal, this box of bed sheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Virginian clothes. Cloth. Do you have any explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was this cargo hold. So they were afraid to leave signs that the box for the sheets had been opened. However, the Virginian cloth... Well, that's a horse of, of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Shengfa? That's right. That's why the Virginian cloth was used. And the only Virginian reader on board 
who could make such a calculated decision. It's you, Camille. You and you alone. <laughs> it would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Sheng Fa authorities in time. We may even find other evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. So what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find out from our investigation in Sheng Fa? Bubbles. <laughs> he, he was Interpol. I couldn't stop it. I brought him here. He started taking pictures. I, I couldn't be found out. I, I was scared. I was in trouble. I, 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 I. Finished making all the arrangements to make- to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling route? 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 Did she say anything about that? They're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully we can get more out of her there. Whenever we even approached the topic, she just started foaming at the mo mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure. The ring behind this whole mess means serious business. It looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Edgeworth! I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you very much. It was nothing, in fact. I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I, I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers. As a flight attendant. Um, I hope that... Well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Th that's... I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want, want it. No, I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve, Miss Redgeworth. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Now I must bid you farewell. May all your skies be blue no matter where you go. Can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir. But boy, was it fun. She hitting on him. Yes. Speak for yourself. My day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges. By the way, where's, where's Francisca? Oh, she's filling out some customs pa paperwork for her departure. Departure? Yeah, Miss Von Karma's always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding her case. Detective, can you cancel the car I had? I had you reserved earlier. You got it, sir. Francisca. I thought I told you when I, when you first la landed. I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time. However, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar remin remin <laughs> reminiscences. Just who do you think I am? We are Francisco von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. Hm, until only a little while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing Pierrot, living her life on the name and fame her invincible father built. True, your father Manfred von Karma didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route. route. I don't know if it's route or route. I mean, I know both work, but I don't know which to use. We found this time is only one sliver of the big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assi assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. Yes, I suppose you can. 
Plus, there is another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent? He's a star among Interpol agents, and has the highest successful arrest, arrest rate. Who knows, you may even run into him one day. Hmm, I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we, should, why we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The fight has only just begun. Okay, so it's Root. Yeah, it's more prevalent, but it's not necessarily the only way to say it. You can see, you can still say both. And that's the thing I hate about it. Least favorite word. I hate it. The fight has only just begun, Miles Edgeworth. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. Just like that, she's gone, huh, sir? In Virginia, interesting. Thank goodness, I can find the rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for her whip. Detective Gumshoe, I want to thank you for all your help and cooperation. Oh, I was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. Uh, just how much did you cut his salary by, Francisca? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down the road in the patrol car if you want. Don't let me remind you, Detective. Safety first. Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Francisca von Karma, the smuggling route she was after. The leaders of that ring had already put, her, put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war. They would begin to make themselves known through the next incident. Hmm. It's worth speaking. Finally, I called who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. I don't know who this is. And you are? Oh, have you forgotten my voice, Miles, my boy? Mr. Armano. Ernest Armano. Ama Amano. Correct? Ah, oh, so you do remember me. I don't! <laughs> I know it's rather sudden, but I, I, I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son, he's been kidnapped. Ernest the Mano? Ernest man? The kidnap turnabout is the next one. Woo woo woo. Yeah, I was also thinking of... Oh no. <laughs> I was also thinking of Godot. Godot, Godot, Godot. Oh. Oh. Kid Godot, no it's not Godot. Oh my god, that was... I am tired. <laughs> I don't know what the plan is for tomorrow. Hold on, wait, how much do I have left actually of this... game? Ah. You love it? Oh, that's great. I love that you love it. Hold on. Yeah, we have three cases left. I can do I well, I can for sure do the next one in in the next. Oh. But hold on, let me just check like who we have in there. Oh, oh you should be excited for the next episode. Some familiar faces, one could say. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm still not ready to go back to um, Okami then, because I still have that fucking boss battle to fight. Ugh. 
and like i'm just like I'm, I'm still not in the right mindset for that and my sister can't make it this week so ace attorney investigations it is then i guess but that means by this boss battles can be fun but like once you're like in this like certain like mindset and uh yeah it's just like not fun hmm i'm wondering the kidnap turnabout i can do in one sitting probably it would take me like four or five hours considering that this was like six chapters and it took me five hours uh the next one is five chapters then the uh turnabout reminiscence is four and the last one is seven so i definitely need to split up the last one at the very least Oh my god. It's fun though. I actually remember this case pretty vividly. Well, it's not super long when you just plow through the entire game in one sitting. <laughs> but the second one, I felt like that one, yeah, that one just felt, fucking went on forever. Like the first case is like two chapters which is fine and then uh which comes after that actually let me just check if it's imprisoned or the other one uh, the imprisoned okay and the next one is four and then there was this fucking long one which is nine and the next one is six and the last one is five but they're like all connected so it just goes on forever <laughs> But it's really good and just, oh my god. Oh my god, I just realized this song right now is a giant hint towards the next episode. I kid you not, you're gonna lose your shit. If it were up to me, I would, uh, I would play more, but I can't. <laughs> Not right now. No, the murder suspect is not the blue badger. Let me just check that, like... Okay, yeah. Just needed to make sure that it was the correct stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna- I'm gonna get some sleep. It's fine. I will go to sleep. Let's hope I can actually fall asleep. Because I've really struggled with that lately. not sure what to wear today and then i was like wait wait i have the perfect thing to wear i have tried them before i believe anyways yeah i think i got like to borrow some from my mom at some point but even sometimes they don't work and i'm like Bleh! i tried using one i had like one left tried using it like a, a while back it was like last year at the end of last year at some point and it just like didn't fucking work okay like, i'm pretty sure i took it and just watched some tv and i just fucking didn't fucking work See. 
But yeah, there's gonna be more blue badger tomorrow. Hope you're excited, cause I'm not. <laughs> Kidding, I kinda am actually. It's not that fluffy, it's, it is pretty nice though, I like it a lot. Oh, by the way, it's like less than a month until my birthday. The colors are to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, matching my headphones. I feel like my scalp is kind of fucked though because of how often I like bleach my hair and stuff because this, it buries itself into my scalp. <laughs> so like at some point it just like really, it really hurts. I don't really have any like plans. I was like, I don't, I don't even know like what I want for my birthday. I was like, you know what, mom, I want clothes. I've been so unhappy with my closet lately. Like, I need more clothes. But like, there are like some, some articles of clothing that I really enjoy that I can't wear when I stream because they're stripes. There are like small stripes and it just like, it doesn't look good with this camera. If I like get like a better camera, maybe. Which I'm still saving up for, but it's gonna take a while, but it's cool. I can make do with this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just, like, doesn't look good, you know? They say that you shouldn't wear, um, stripey clothing. Like, thin stripes on camera. Because it just, like, looks really ugly. Hmm. <sighs> But yeah, it was... I had a lot of fun. It was kind of hard to read at times. I don't know if that was just me or what it was. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm used to like reading from the... From the trilogy now and it has like a different font or whatever. But yeah... <sighs> okay, it was. Well, I'm just like staring at it and like, fuck. What does this say? Also, the text is so slow to appear sometimes, so I'm like sitting there like... Yes? <laughs> so like sometimes I'm guessing and then it's just like the wrong thing that pops up and it's just like, it's, it's a whole thing. And I can't make it go faster. Oh, that's annoying. Nope, no settings. No settings at all. Yeah, it's like when you when you have played it once before, then you can like skip what you are you, what you've already like read or whatever. The three D games, at least the the last one, is pretty good with that. Where you can skip like red text, and you can just like. Oh, I'm so excited for those. God, I'm so excited! I'm just like... Ah! Yeah. It is, but unfortunately that's not really anything I can do anything about. 
I remember for the second game though, it was like really weird. There are, there's so many left. <laughs> there's still like five left after this one. <laughs> Anyways, in the in the second investigations game, uh, I remember that there were like certain parts you could skip, other parts you couldn't skip. But I believe that was like a mistake, like made within like the, the game file or something. Yes, so many fun streams and so many more annoying. Maybe I don't know. I'm excited to get to the 3DS games because I have no idea how they play out. Oh, uh, uh, not on an emulator, of course. I would never, I would never use an emulator. Never. <laughs> never, ever. <laughs> uh. But yeah, so like the second game is fan translated because it was never released outside of Japan. Or maybe it was in Korea. I don't. I'm not really sure, but it was never like released over here. So it's like fan translated, but it's like so well translated. Like it's, I love it. Honestly, like they did a great job. Mm-hmm. I know, right? It's great. I believe they did the same thing for the first Digect and Saiban game too, but it's just too much of a hassle or something. I don't know, something like that. Or they, <laughs> well, the 3DS games were, were released overseas. I would know because I have them all. I say all when there are like two of them. But I'm currently playing like the, the, the remaster for Apollo Justice. Yeah, no. Anyways, I am <sighs> gonna end this here. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm excited to let you get further into what is investigations because it's great, truly. some of these characters I'm like not that like familiar with because you like always see them once but like some of them I will have like more of like an understanding about like who they are and like what voice to give them also I didn't want to be like seem like racist in like this case which is why I didn't like do anything funny with uh, LeBlanc's um, voice I didn't want to seem like racially insensitive or something. I don't know. So I was like, meh, go for something safe. It may not be the best, but it's safe. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I'm rambling again. <laughs> Who would have thought? Anyways, yeah, thank you for being here in this having fun with me, you know? Like... It makes me so happy whenever you're 
you're here just chilling with me, just playing games and trying to figure it out, like, on your own while I play, even though I'm just following a guide, though I, I do know what's happening. In the game. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I just looked at the messages you sent me on Discord, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy my streams. And yes, those suitcases are awful, but those are only suitcase covers. Those are those aren't actually the suitcase in in themselves. You know? I'll read the Sherlock copyright one afterwards because holy god, that was that seems long. Anyways. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, when I will be back with more edgy, you know, like our tiny baby boy edgy. <laughs> oh yeah, it seems like a really long boy. Ah. You, you certainly get like more of like a feeling for uh, edge words personality in these games because you're like more around him and you're not just like seeing him at like certain points and from Phoenix's perspective you know you work at home okay cool I have to start kind of early so I say kind of early I mean like five <laughs> Like, I don't actually think he brings, like, the chess set with him. He has, like, another one. He has two of those bitches. And one he brings on the fucking plane. one especially for travel and he just puts it up in like the same he doesn't even use the play chess he just puts it up in like the same way surrounding the blue pawn <laughs> wow subtle really subtle i also love how fucking fast in the fucking first episode that he just fucking, his mind went straight to Phoenix. I'm just, a contradiction, I'm starting to sound like him. <laughs> like whom? Whom? Hmm? Huh? Huh? What, what did you say? What did, who, do, who, do you, who do you sound like? of subtlety oh yeah for sure for sure
picture? What kind of picture? I wonder. I have place to send it. Anyways, I gotta go. I am way too tired for this right now. Uh, yeah. I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Hope you sleep well. Hope you have a good day at work, I guess. And, uh... See you tomorrow. Peace.